Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. Let's get right into it, guys. Hey, everyone. Welcome to 4Player Podcast. This is our 2023 award show. I was about to say Game of the Year. We're really not doing Game of the Year. We're doing everything but Game of the Year. This is our annual award show. Uh, I am, I'm your host, Nick Henderson. I am joined by Brad Simons. Hello. Nolan Hedstrom. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Christopher Guthridge. Hello. Ed Mitchell. I'm here. And Christopher Davis. Good evening. Another full house this week. Um, so, like I said, we're here for our annual award show. Now, a couple things about this. If you've been listening to our show for a while, for a few years maybe, uh, you'd know that, historically speaking, these are these are pretty long episodes. We, we've actually, over the past few years, have been kind of like trimming some of the fat and cutting some of the, uh, some of the categories out and whittling it down. And I think we have our leanest show to date as far as award categories tonight so we have a total if you count like soundtracks our favorite soundtracks which we usually play a sample of our favorite soundtracks during the breaks um it's a total of 12 categories but only 11 that we're going to be going over um outside and we of got some, we got some like if i could lay out some guidelines here because not yes, yes, all of absolutely. these are are uh I, so so in the past, what we've done, which I think has made the show really long, is we've had a runner up and we've had a winner and then we'd all spend time talking about honorable mentions. Right. Right. Um, so this year, not only do we have less categories, but there are some categories and I'll tell you which ones where we don't even have a runner up. You just say your winner and that's it right. we, on the categories where there are runner ups. Like we're talking, you say a couple of sentences. It's a, it's a runner up. It ain't a winner. You know, we don't even have a podium. It got no it award. It basically sucks. A couple of sentences. And honorable mentions. Are nothing but name drops. Here, you, literal name drops only. And yep. I think I said one each. So, you know. One each? Oh, no. Okay, well. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, I'll figure that if, out. If they are literal, if we are, if we we're policing ourselves, if we are good about saying title only, maybe we can throw in a couple more, but we're, we're trying to run lean here. But uh, if I could ahead of time, should I say which ones only have one award? Uh, or, yeah, I, I like no runner up to do, but go ahead. And since you're already on no the subject, runner up and do that. So for the best new enemy slash boss fight, no runner up, you get a winner. That's it. It's just a boss dog. Um, the sp- uh, most of the awards are two, but the, the other ones with no runner up is the spotlight award is a, you know, game you think needs more attention. The asterisk award, which is traditionally the award uh, we've given to like stuff like DLC and old game and early access game, you know, stuff that quote unquote doesn't really count for like game of the year. You know what I mean? Um, and <clears throat> so no runner up for that. We have a new award called the won't quit you award, or are we calling it the won't quit you or the promise award? Uh, I wrote down exactly how you put it, which is, I mm. won't quit you, I promise. <laughs> oh, it's no, not even an award. That, that, wait, no, it's that was a forward time. slash. It was, won't quit you slash the promise award. Promise award. Well, I uh, I wrote it differently, so... It, I won't quit you, I promise? It's officially I called the, I won't, quit, I won't quit you, I promise award. And the I is it, italicized on Nick's uh, spreadsheet, I guess. Um, I won't yeah, quit so, so, so that, that, that's the game that we promised to keep playing slash finish in 2024 um yep. that one no runner up you so um so real quick Shut since we're since we're i do have a little bit of housekeeping to do but before we do that since we are kind of already talking about this stuff 
and about awards and whatnot. Um, I might as well just go ahead and run down the, the award categories we are going to cover tonight. Um, it's going to be best world slash level design, best looking game, best video game moment, best storytelling, best new enemy slash boss fight, best new character, biggest surprise, biggest disappointment, won't quit you, I promise, award, uh, spotlight award, and we'll end with our asterisk award, which is like Brad said, it's kind of a, uh, you know, something that wouldn't normally qualify for game of the year, whether it's a different year or, or you know, DLC or expansion or something. Um, so that's going to be, like I said, it's a little bit leaner than usual, but maybe it gives us a little more wiggle room to kind of like talk about stuff, some of these things in more depth. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And then during each one of the breaks, which we'll do after every three categories, we'll play two samples uh, or two soundtrack picks from each from 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 us throughout throughout the show. So um Stick around for that. Now, before we get into the actual awards, a couple of things I wanted to do. First of all, I want to let everybody know. Uh, what was that? Oh, was, that was Chris Davis giving a thumbs up. Oh, um, Osama Ben Affleck right. just gifted 10 subs in the chat. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah, what a psycho. Very, very generous. Thank you, Osama Ben Affleck. Um, so a couple of things I want, to, I, want, I want to get out of the way first. Uh, one, if you have not yet gone and listened to our show from last week, we did our, our 2024 uh, fantasy critic draft, which is always a lot of fun. Um, some things have changed. We've and Ed's playing this year, which is exciting. Um, and things are off to a, a great start. And I want to let everybody know that the we had 20 community members who signed up to do their own leagues, and we have four of those leagues running concurrently right now, set up in Discord. And everybody in those leagues has done their draft, so that's super exciting. So if you want to go poke your head in there and, and take a look at those dra those uh, leagues as well and see what everybody's talking about, the channels are set up accordingly in Discord. You can follow them on the Fancy Critic website, and we're going to be talking about all that stuff throughout the year. So that's super exciting. Uh, and lastly, um, I, have, I have finalized, I have tallied everything up, and we officially have our, our 2023 Community Game of the Year list, top 10. Uh, I'm not going to go over that list tonight because we're going to post that on fourplayernetwork.com when we have all of our videos and everything done. Um, but I, I do want to, one, announce the two winners because everybody who submitted was entered in a drawing. We're going to pick two winners and we're going to send those people a game as a thank you for participating. And I'm going to announce those winners now. Um, so first, I want to say we had 49 people submit their top 10 list. Thank you to all of those people. It was really interesting going through these, um, and it was the competition for the top ten. We had, between those forty nine people, there were a hundred and nine games. So, uh, and the and the the battle for the top like three or four games in the list was absolutely brutal. It was just it was constant back and forth, and it was really interesting. So, we'll, like I said, that that list will be available uh, later on this month when all of our videos are out. But now, I want to congratulate our two drawing winners. Uh, the first one is actually Skylar, who has been very active in our Discord lately. So congratulations, Skylar. I'm going to reach out to both of these people via DMs so we can talk about logistics and everything as far as sending y'all the game and how that's going to work and everything. So congratulations to Skylar. I don't know if, if that person is in chat tonight. Oh, it looks like, uh, yeah, Sterling Sky, I think, is, is Skylar. So congratulations, Skylar, for that. And our second winner um, goes by the name of lox bagel in discord i don't know if that person is in chat tonight but if you are congratulations yeah that person suspiciously looks like uh skyler wearing a baseball cap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who knows who knows um i will say this uh just as a <laughs> both of those people have the same game of the year uh you want to guess what that was <laughs> red ball Baldur's Gate yes. 3. Nailed it. Uh, you nailed it, Chris Davis. Redfall. No, it's Final Fantasy 16. They both mm -hmm. picked Baldur's Gate 3 as their game of the year. Um, but anyways, congratulations to the winners. Like I said, I will be reaching out to you guys uh, in Discord via DM, either later tonight or tomorrow, so we can talk about logistics and have you all pick a game and whatnot. So again, thank you to everybody who submitted a list, all 49 of you. We really appreciate it. That's, I think, the most people we've ever had uh, participate in this, and hopefully it's just going to get go up from there so we'll see what we can do in 2024 um but without further ado i think it's time to get into our award categories um now brad did you want to mention anything about because we had eliminated a category i don't know if you wanted to mention that at the oh, top uh, of this or? well we we usually 
uh, doing a war for like biggest regret. And it's, it's, it's basically the game, you know, that we didn't get to that we really wanted to, that we knew we'd like, or the game we didn't finish or play nearly enough of. So the reason I traditionally, I like to have it like at the top of the show as like the first award. So we could be like, ah, well, you know, I didn't get to this. So it's probably not, you're probably not going to see it on many of these award categories like tonight, that sort right. of thing. Um, but instead of giving an award, you know, we could just rattle some off. If we have any big ones y'all want to mention, not to spend too much time on it, just kind of. You want to start us here. off and rattle off a couple sure. of, on your. I feel really bad because um, remember Fuzzy December? Fuzzy December? <laughs> yes. Where we, we were going to. Oh, last oh. year we kind of did our game of the year stuff a little bit yes. early. And, and we, Are you like, about to say that? Game, games from last December that we were going to get around to. And I never uh, finished Chained Echoes, and I feel yeah, terrible. that's me too. I never even started it. Yeah. <laughs> it was giving me shit about finishing that in January uh, or something, and giving me a well, honorable mention last no, 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 year. No, no, like... no, that was a different topic. That was about you deciding it was going to go on last year's Game of the Year show after you played only a little bit, but whatever. Um, <laughs> a little bit. I had played like forty hours of it at that point. So. Not when we did. You, no, um, that's not true. Octopath Traveler 2 is the other big one for me. I feel mm. really bad. It was one I was like always telling myself I'd get around to, and I never got around to it, but it was a tough year. I picked that game up the day that um um um, um, um help me out here. Who's the who's the journalist? I don't know, that I don't care. Hey, that can, game? I, can I borrow it? Can I have oh, it? Oh, Schreier? It's all my I'll thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh Jason Schreier is oh, like raving about it. Is it on your shelf? That's crazy. No, it's on my Steam library. So yes, you can borrow it is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, well, that's even harder actually to borrow uh, apparently. From me, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two quick mentions for me is Jusson. Jusson? Jusson. Jusson. I, yeah, I, I really wanted to play that and never got you around to it. You have an excuse that it's on Game Pass. I know, I, I have it downloaded already. Uh, and Hi-Fi Rush. Um, oh. Also Game Pass. Oh. Also, uh, oh. uh, early, early hit for me. And then the third one is the big one that will explain all my other categories. It is Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, you're... Uh, yep, yep. Uh, fuck you. Okay. Hey, I didn't finish Hi-Fi Rush either. It was just a, a year of... It was one I had on my PC, and I just what? was never sitting in front of my PC. Yeah. So unless I could stream it to my Steam Deck or to my Steam Link uh, in, in the thing, I didn't play PC games. And Hi-Fi Rush is a... You can't music, stream a rhythm that game. game. <laughs> and I, I, I was like, well, I can't stream this. I'm going to have to literally go sit on my PC to play this. And I just, that ain't the life I live anymore, man. It sucks, but yeah. it's true. Oh, it's the same, same feel. Well, it's supposed uh, to be coming to Switch or even PlayStation fairly soon. That's, so That's the rumor, yeah. Hmm. Uh, Chris Davis, you want to rattle off some any regrets you might have? Uh, regrets of things I didn't get to? Um, yeah. It's still on my fucking coffee table, just waiting to be opened. But uh, Star Ocean, the second story, R. Uh, um, yeah. Always wanted to play the. That's always been on my battle clock. Just never got around to it. Uh, if, maybe this it summer. Really a, it was like a late release, late ish release for the year. It's not. It was. Friday. It was November. And honestly, instead of playing that, I played Super Mario RPG, and I feel like I'm a better person for it. There you go. It's fine. Um, it's fine. Also, uh, I Trepang 2, I actually didn't play a shooter this year, I don't think, other uh, than RoboCop. Y'all have all yeah, surprised me one way or another with it, with one of the games that you said <laughs> on your, yeah. your regrets yeah, list so far. Yeah, like, man, what? Yeah. We're, busy, we're too busy watching Smallville again, you know? We don't have hey, all the time. The anymore. funny thing is you're joking about that, and, like, I, like, I played Hi-Fi Rush. I played Trepang 2. Also, not oh, watching I Smallville know. right now, you bitch, but I am watching a lot of stuff. No, I'm not um, saying you didn't have a lot of game time. I'm saying I didn't have a lot of game time, Nick. Fair enough. Um, now, Nolan, you've had a very busy year. <laughs> yeah. What would you like to say yeah. about, about your regrets? Um, <laughs> so I have 48 games on my list. No, uh, I'll go over the top few that I do actually really, I meant to get around to playing for sure and just didn't get a chance. So Cocoon is one. Um, mm. I really wanted to play Cocoon, just didn't get to it. Uh, Talos Principle 2, um, mm. I loved the first one, I really wanted to play 2, heard good things. Uh, and then uh, the only other one that's not a regret, because uh, I had no intentions of playing it, is Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. Uh, Dang, shots fired across play, the bow. Uh, hey, it's funny, Cocoon Nick has entirely. that on his list too for this award. Uh, I absolutely don't. I, I play uh, Cocoon entirely on uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming, by the way. Oh, yeah? Uh, it, it, I mean, it's a puzzle game, so it works It yeah. worked pretty well. 
Um, yeah, that's true. And it's only like five hours of gameplay. Mm. So, yep. Um, yeah. It's a good one uh, to knock out for sure. Crispy? Regrets? Regrets? Uh, nah, man, I don't really live my life like that. I don't regret it. <laughs> I knew you were going to say this. I knew you were going to do no. this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my regrets for this year are I. I I didn't play El Paso elsewhere, which Yay. I wanted to. It does look cool. And I thought it looked cool. I didn't play Dredge, which, like, yeah. for a minute, yeah. I thought I was the only one excited about that game. Um, didn't play it. <laughs> and I also Nick really... finished it. He found... Uh, I, uh, I, uh, Fuck off. I also was going to find time to download and uh, poke around with uh, myhouse.wad. But Me I did not sorry, do Carlos. that. I'm sorry, That's... Carlos. I watched a full playthrough of it on YouTube. That counts. I'm sorry. My, I mean, that does count. <laughs> it does that, count. That shit's insane, though. Wait. It's wild. It's, it, yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, we'll it's have, art. Car- we'll let Carlos talk about it in his uh, game of the year. I didn't play enough art games this year. That's the problem. Um, huh. And as, as far as I go, regrets, uh, I think one of the biggest ones they have is Shadow Gambit. Didn't mm. I didn't play it. Love Des- Desperados 3 and was itching to play that. And I just didn't. Um, all, also, uh, I really, you know, he- hearing Chris Davis talk about it and watching some footage of it and whatnot. Aliens Dark Descent. I wanted to try. Um, mm. Didn't get to That's it. That's better than people are giving it credit for. I started Lies of P. Uh, I got about five hours into it. and I'm really enjoying it, but I, I don't think I played enough to like consider it for game of the year and, and whatnot. So another one I had on PC and kind of refused to stream because it it's Perry yeah. based, you know, yeah. that I think four is another me, one. Yeah. I played like 10 hours of it and haven't gone back. And lastly, I bought Street Fighter six and it's still in shrink wrap. Mm. So um, <laughs> I, you, you, regret you regret buying it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I regret, regret the purchase. I might regret the purchase. Uh, I mean, there's always a few purchases that I regret from year mm-hmm. to year. I, and here's the thing. I, I think I would like to play Street Fighter 6, but considering how far down the priority list it was, I probably could have just waited and picked it up way later for a lot cheaper and been and still oh, man. enjoyed it. So Well, yeah, now um, I feel bad. I feel like that was a bona fide award category. We had stuff to say. Oh, well. Maybe oh, we'll, we'll bring it back in future years since hey, it I never mean, went away. Hey, the, the only difference is that we don't have an overlay on the stream. Yeah, we don't have an overlay. <laughs> wow, wow. We don't have any these fucking overlays. Right. Our first official category for the night is best world slash level design. And I'm gonna uh, let I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of go in the order that I see the, the cameras on my screen. Um so I'm gonna go with Brad. No oh, shit. Yeah, no, he's my top left. Like go that. is that Sorry. I think I usually go first on these things. Yeah. Um also, so, should, so should I say runner up, which wait, is wait, wait, be, sorry, which sorry, is sorry. Good. Real quick, let me interrupt you real quick. Nolan, do you want because you you had some kind of caveats about being here tonight in terms of like, yet. do you want to say that about? No, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay. It's not it's not just, a, not a secret. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I can just jump in real quick before Brad starts. I only played eight games this year. Uh, right. From this year, let me rephrase. I played some games that were pre 2023. Um, I can't even do a top ten. I did not yeah. play 10 2023 games. I thought hey, you put uh, it when you me- when you messaged me earlier yeah. when you said that you know life got in the way, but you so you found time to play like comfort games and stuff hey, that you know you may have. Yeah, played. I, yeah. So d- during my move, um, you know, across the fucking country uh, and everything that's been going on in my life, I just you know it's one of those things where at the end of the day I'm just exhausted mentally, and I love playing video games beyond a doubt but i hate when i start playing a game and i zone out and i'm not paying attention to it and i don't feel like i do you know certain games deserve that and so i I would lean back on comfort games on something that i could just kind of turn my brain off and zone out and play or maybe have a podcast on while i'm playing it just because it's a lot easier to do that than you know anybody who plays games know they require a decent amount of focus yeah, um, yeah. I played Heart Space Shipwrecker so, like yesterday, and that is absolutely mm-hmm. a zone out, like just chill game for me. Yeah. And, so, so, and so that was a lot of what I did this year was was not 2023 games. I played a lot of, uh, you know, like um, uh, Binding of Isaac uh, was one I spent a lot of time on. I, I kind of got back into Pokemon a little bit just because that one's kind of easy to do. Um, uh, um, and then um, Vampire Survivors. I played a lot of Vampire Survivors. <laughs> Um, so I'm not I'm not saying I played bad games. I played some good games. It's just not 2023. Not a lot of new ones. So you uh, can still do as... a top eight games list. Yeah, I can. No, I'd be happy to make it. a top eight for you. Um, <laughs> we'll see. But as far little... as as far as tonight, if you think about it, then his number eight would be his least favorite game of the year. 
<laughs> that's true that is true um so as far as nolan's participation tonight he's hanging out and he's gonna chime in where he can he's gonna give me a really cool hand signal we just uh, <laughs> when he's when he's gonna it's participate middle finger. when he's gonna participate in the category um so just keep that in mind if you don't hear him chime in, chime in on certain categories that's what's going on so anyways turning it back over to brad for best world slash level design uh are we uh, or one runner up and your winner oh here it is um yeah for my runner up which i'm just you know what what like th- what are we doing like 30 seconds max on a runner up does that, that feel about right max huh. we'll feel it yeah. out uh my runner up is pizza tower it's one i mm. finally got around to really late but the level design and the little things to that make a the levels funny and clever especially on the way back through after you finish it and you're running through you would think you're running through the same level again, but no, they find cool, funny tricks to like, you know, mix it up. Brilliant game, honestly. <clears throat> Am I? But my winner is for best world slash level design. Should be no surprise. They took one of the, I think, one of the greatest world, I mean, the greatest maps, the greatest worlds, does levels, designs, whatever, and video games with Breath of the Wild. And then they added two more layers and they managed to make that those layers like just as if not more compelling with the depths and all the stuff in the sky. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely that was my runner up. It. Yeah. And so that's why it's to the my depths, winner baby. for best world slash level design. Yeah, no, that I, yeah. What, what else can you say about that? That world was already phenomenal. And the fact that the depths themselves were like a surprise the, all the way up. Yeah. Like, I mean, the first time I went down to the depths, I was okay. like, I can't believe they did this. Also, this really is the entire they have an underground for the entire world yeah. and they, they find ways to like, keep that like interesting, like diverse, like cool, clever ideas down there. Always exciting, always scary. Like I was surprised by how much I fell in love with the depths. It was actually the star of the show for me. I thought it was going to be the sky and sure enough, it was underground. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. It was cool that they like put walls up around, around different parts. So you wouldn't like get yourself out of the areas that you were like at first. And then later on, you found out that like, once you could build like flying devices or whatever, you could get over the walls and get around very easily down there. It was super cool. The Hmm. truly brilliant part of the design of that world is when you start to put together how the things that are happening on the service are connecting to the stuff yes. that's happening yeah. in the sky and the yeah. stuff that's happening down below. And when I realized like, Oh, the areas that I can't pass through down below are the areas where there's like water up above and just kind of making those connections in my head and finally coming to those revelations. It's like, I can't believe people made this. This is insane. Did you guys find out the, the like trick with the shrines? Yeah. Well, I mean, well, which, oh, so, yeah, so trick? the fact that like every, so can I preface this by saying there's going to be spoilers tonight? We're going to be talking yeah, about yeah. this there's game. Be, right? We're going to spoil them. It's an award show. We can't, if we filter ourselves when we're talking about the things we truly love, then it's going to be hard to really convey those things. But, but yeah, what, what Ed is, is, is saying is that how every, all the light routes you, you find below are like directly connected to shrines up above. Right. And, and when you realize that and you're at the surface, you're like, wait a minute. You can use them There's to a like root down yeah. below. There should yeah. be a it's really easy here. to see light roots. It's not yeah. always as easy to see the shrines. So you can kind of mix, mix and match and find them together. It, so yeah. it's easy to find shrines become easy, harder to find out light roots and stuff like that. It's brilliant. Yeah. Effortlessly yeah. Also, brilliant. I wish the it's... game told me that. I, I, I don't know if the game does tell me that or not, but I saw it online. Be and, very you know, careful what you're saying, Ed, because the last time I said something like that, I got yelled at by everyone. Well, that was it, like probably it might a be week one of those after things the game where came it, out and we didn't preface yeah. it by saying spoilers. Maybe it said it in passing or something like that. No, it's fine. Yeah. It, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes they'll say it as like just like random dialogue. Uh, from a character that you maybe aren't paying attention to, and that's how they give yeah, you that. I, 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 like right? I don't think yeah. they do. Right? I don't think I wanted them to like hint at it or whatever. Like, isn't that isn't that strange? Like, or some you know something like that, or like bring me along the way, or maybe it'd be a quest line or like something like that. But um, I, I, I read about I, it, and then to, after that, I was like, okay. To, tell you to what, Brad's though, point like about the depths. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> to Brad's point about the depths being, you know, interesting and scary is one of those things where early on in the game, when you first go down there, it is hard as shit. 
especially with the gloom damage when you lose mm -hmm. your maximum number of hearts and like it really made that part of the game challenging i felt that you know you know coming off of the first game like oh this will be easy you know i'm so used to the controls and there's a few new mechanics but whatever but no man like the enemies are tough uh, you you take that gloom damage and you lose hearts and if you don't happen to have the ingredients you need to to recover them like you can get fucked like real quick in the game the depths were, were like i think most exciting when they were scariest let me tell you when i was thinking about tears of the kingdom i was like i was like man no very few games make me feel this smart and then i really thought about it and i'm like no no very few games have made me felt as dumb as tears of the kingdom <laughs> i probably mapped out well over 50 percent of the depths you know using various methods before i realized i can just shoot one of these light flowers to the front of my like hover bike and i'll never have yeah. to worry about light again it, mm -hmm. i was like 80 hours into the game before i started doing that and i felt so stupid so <laughs> stupid that's pretty dumb but it, but it was very exciting and scary before i figured that out the the yeah, I mean, that is that is a hallmark of this game. I'm only going to talk about this because this is also my number one. Um, like, we're all kind so, of... So, yeah, this is my number one. Uh, that right but that idea that, like, your own creativity can dramatically impact even just, like, the difficulty of the game. <laughs> like, yeah. like it's a, it's a, it's a adventure RPG action game where, like, being creative is at a premium like because yep. you have so many tools to do so many things in so many like lateral ways like it's i don't know it's really special i wish i really wish drunken merchant were here right now so we could just like beat the fuck out of him like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. oh man that's I mean, I, that's funny i mean i mean the the, the level design the world design of tears of the kingdom is excellent like the fact that the vents between the surface and the depths is actual real geometry that you can manipulate and climb. Like I purposely took two hours out of my day just to try to find out whether I could climb up to the top from the depths. And I fucking did you it. Did what? Yes. You madman. How long did that take you? Oh, it, it took like two or three tries. Two but hours. Like, <laughs> it actually it worked out. So you can long. actually do it. Yeah, I, I did kind of, I mean, some of my favorite moments in that game were, like, epiphany moments where I, like, I jumped from, like, this uh, an island in the sky and, like, fell straight into one of the, the vents going down into the depths, and there's no loading. It, like, it, I make, it, make, it takes me back to, like, when we were talking about Skyward Sword, like, oh, my God, can you seamlessly go from sky to the ground, whatever, blah, 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 and that obviously didn't come to pass, and this is, like... All of those things that I think were that felt like they were missing from that game brought to life and like, but like times ten, it was, it was insane. We finally got can that we, feeling. Can, it was I very just cool. want to say, please let's call them chasms or something because Vince sounds super lame. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> it's way we're way cooler than. That's what they Vince. call them right? They call them chasms. They do. It's true. They do call. Yeah. Them, I think they do uh, call them chasms. Call them All right. I mean, so I will feel chasm. Let's move on to the. So that was a fish. That, technically, Brad and yeah, Crispy's that, that was that was a two. Uh, awards from one person so far and we are 30 minutes in man we can never do we it's impossible it's you're, impossible. you're wasting valuable time right now chris davis what is your runner-up and winner for best world design uh runner-up is alan wake 2 mm, i yeah. there are just so many good sections of those various maps that make you go wow remedy figured out how to do a survival horror game super tricky um, and going back and it, forth between them was pretty cool. like Coffee World um, alone was one of the creepiest areas I've played in in a good long time. Like it's it's they nailed atmosphere in nailing that world design. It was great. My uh, winner, and this might be a trend tonight, uh, Sea of Stars. Uh, I love the presentation they did with Sea of Stars with the, with the map design. The fact that everything you see on the map as you're exploring like is a thing that you can interact with or go to like so many ma of, of world maps will do things like that where, yeah, there's some pretty marker on the map, but that's not something that's actual real. No, you can go interact with that. You just got to keep progressing through the game and it just keeps building and building until you, when you actually get to the fucking sea of stars, like that's a revelation mm. moment. It's so that fucking pretty, cool. That was a pretty cool moment. And also very nostalgic. Absolutely. 
cool. Uh, there we go. There we go, Brad. How's that for for brevity? Um, I like Ed. It. Yes. So as I mentioned, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is my runner-up. I only did uh, that as my runner-up because we got rid of new gameplay experience, and I feel like there's a little bit of overlap between these two. Yeah. Okay. So I went ahead and did Humanity as my winner. Mm. Uh, Humanity is a real-time strategy game that has puzzle elements oh, to Humanity. it. And every single one of those levels was like, it was like something was clicking in my head. I remember thinking about this when, uh, when I uh, talked about Desperados, about how like every level is like a little tiny puzzle and you just, you're just doing puzzles upon puzzles upon puzzles or whatever. But like humanity is just like, you get streams of people and you can do, you can tell them where, where to go and people die all the time but by the stream, by the fact that you have billions of people coming through these doors, you'll eventually win if you just keep if you just put the things in the right places and get them al along the way and the, the it i mean just a beautiful game um and uh, it might even come every up, uh, later hey hey let me, let me just fun. say i'm glad ed's here so we there i i feel we have a fellow We're always glad ed's appreciator here. and uh and I'm glad because yeah, yeah humanity Shout was it, it was a lot of fun. Like it was one of those one of those games. There's been a couple of them this year where it's just like I pick it up and I started playing and I didn't put it down until I finished it. Basically, it's like actually uh, like challenging. Like it's a really yeah, challenging yeah. puzzle game. And I feel like there's a lot of like puzzle games and puzzle stuff in games these days where it's like especially okay, getting this those is clever. People or but whatever. This isn't very like head scratching. Humanity man had me like really stumped um yeah at you first know. you don't realize like how complex it could be until like later levels where you're only given like one ability or you'll limited mm -hmm. number number of abilities to use and it, you have to figure out exactly what the right place to put it in as the game designer decided and uh um, sterling sky in chat says humanity made me pick up a piece of paper and, and a pen and that's made mm. me think about like that's exactly totally. how i felt about last year when we did this category and i talked about tunic uh i yeah. feel like some of my favorite games that as far as world design and level design go are almost are a lot of times are games that make me feel like i need to pick up a, a, a piece of paper and a pen and in some case i feel like some people might look at that and be like though that sounds bad actually but like i it's it's so it's inspiring i don't, I, I don't it's such a hard thing to describe like i don't know it's that hearing somebody say that about humanity makes me want to, <laughs> makes me you, want you to play, play humanity it. i mean like i think you i think you would really like it it's okay. a lot of fun no, they what? They podcast. shame on you. Also, PSVR two support, and you're like the only one on the planet who bought one of those <laughs> fucking things. I am. So you yeah. should try it. Yeah. Uh, uh, to, to your point, in in regards to like picking up pen and paper for games, yeah. So like, Tunic was definitely one for me. I remember when I was doing playing a uh, Telling Lies mm -hmm. uh, with Bernadette. That was mm -hmm. another one where we actually started making actual notes so we could remember to do stuff. But I think one of the first games, at least in the modern era, was definitely uh, The Witness. The way that's uh, yeah, trying, the trying, just trying to solve those pu uh, puzzles in the game was ridiculous. And so like literally both Bernadette and I sitting on the floor with graphing paper. Uh, uh, yeah, like I, so I felt good. like it was like a beautiful <laughs> mind. Like I just like I love that. strewn about. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, and Crispy, you said you, Tears of the Kingdom was your winner. Did you have a runner up you wanted to mention? Tears of the Kingdom was my winner. My runner up was um, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Yes. Mm. Okay. Excellent uh, choice. I I mean I think it was a wonderful improvement, a wonderful sort of iteration on uh Jedi Out or um what was the first one called? Fallen Order. Jedi Order. Fallen Order. Jedi Fallen Fall Order. Order. Yeah. Uh, it's bad names. Um. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I I really like the I really like the main world that the that the Kobo? game took place on. What? Kobo. Kobo. That's what it was called. Yeah. That's what it was called. Kobo and um you go to Jetta, which Jetta was really cool in that game, and the um whatever that like weird phantom planet you end up at the end of the game. Mm, yeah. Like I don't know, I, I just thought it was really cool. I I like that they made it more of like an open world kind of exploration game than the first one. Kind of opened up the promise of that idea of like a open world kind of uh Right. Star Wars game. That's I don't know. Yeah. That's a biggest regret uh contender for me for sure and that was a good be. game it it, it i yeah. mean it's really easy to forget like how good it was because it just got like washed away by totally monumental releases but yeah it, that, that game was sick 
I haven't forgotten about it, baby. All right. My runner up for best world slash level design. Um, I realize a lot of people are going to be talking about Tears of the Kingdom, which is definitely an honorable mention for me. But I runner up, mm, I'm going to go with famously... Amnesia the, the Bunker. Huh. Amnesia? Specifically, nice. Amnesia the Bunker specifically because they had they had to find a way to take Amnesia and make it more condensed, but kind of create like a loop in like a smaller limited space and make it uniquely terrifying um with the generator it, and keeping the lights the, on right the generator keeping the lights on and trying to like and venturing away from the safe zone and seeing like braving th- that limited environment and then coming back to the safe zone was just it was such a cool loop um so i love that but my winner um and this is just because it kind of made me my brain melt um is cocoon man i yeah i don't the it's whole like worlds me, within sure. worlds within worlds and like having to like unravel that in your mind it's just like it's one of those it's just a puzzle mechanic that i still don't think i fully understand or grasp it wasn't until like near the very end of the game that i felt like i finally kind of had like a basic understanding of it and yeah. was able to kind of do things intentionally and, and that um, that last puzzle is like you oh. go from one world to another and you don't even realize it and then when you back out you're like wait oh. what did i just do and you're like okay <laughs> yeah man it's it's such a cool thing uh no one you should play it it's 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 Uh, cool it's why it's one of my biggest regrets for sure yeah yeah all right you should play it award we maybe we we should (laughs) make (laughs) Make (laughs) um any honorable mentions these are just shout outs here like uh i mean so many uh ballers gate three but only we're only doing titles we're only doing titles Talos Uh, principle two yeah Talos principle two for me as well and shadow gambit um for me nice uh, Tell anything us anything else? See was a regret Dead Space oh, remake. Super Mario, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Oh, in such a year. Yeah, it's in such a year. It's a, that's it's more than a, a title. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the you could smile <laughs> after you say the title, but that's it. Uh, also, shout smile out. Smile doesn't Atomic come Heart. across to the podcast listeners. <laughs> shout out to Atomic Heart as well for me. You can hum. Um, okay, so, one award down. Best looking game. Now this can be. We used to have this in two categories. It used to be like best technical and best like aesthetic or whatever. But like now yeah. it's just best looking. Whatever you think is the best we've, looking game. And, of the and year. we've also been explaining best looking in that exact same way for eighteen years. Hey, this is for um, people listening. Maybe listen to our award show for the first time. Best looking. Go, Brad. Yeah, I don't. You know any any web any website or outlet that did best looking technical is such a stupid fucking award anyway. <laughs> But whatever. Um, hey, best looking game. I hate we that it already brought up humanity because I think is such a beautiful, beautiful looking game. Just the just the endless streams of humanity flying all over the place. It, 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 just a wonderful, wonderful game to look at. It is my runner up. My winner for best looking game. And I mean this. This is one of my favorite looking thing. It it goes on my little short list of uh just best looking things ever. But I love, love, love. And it's such a huge upgrade over the first one. How Darkest Dungeon 2 looks. Mm. I can't believe they took a game, which I thought had a brilliant art style. And man, they just turned it up to 11. Like not only did they go from 2D to 3D and like really nail that transition, but it's, it is just ugh, like like the animations, the way they move and stuff now, like just when they're like like idle animations, just absolutely fucking wonderful, Stunning. wonderful game. I, I really feel like not enough people gave Darkest Dungeon two a chance th- this year. And when I, you know it was, it's a, it's a tough game. It, well, it's a very, very challenging game, and it's it it's it's a tough transition from the first game, and it can be really frustrating. And like early on in the game, I was having a really tough time, and I feel like stuff like the visuals and the music and the presentation, which they're so good at like absolutely so good at almost like carried me like like when I was most frustrated with the game, I kept turning it back on because the game is just so like in the atmosphere. It's just so nice to look at. Absolutely beautiful. Darkest dungeon too. I love it. Finished it cool. finally. And it was very, very difficult. And I, I just, I want to keep playing. I want to keep playing. Cool. Uh, Chris Davis, why don't you go next? Oh, okay. uh, best looking game. I know I'm going to get shit for this, but I'm talking oh, from a yes. purely technical perspective. Mm, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Well, yeah. It's your award. It's you do what you from want. a technical perspective. Best looking Robocop Rogue City. 
Huh. That game, you <laughs> literally like this is the best demonstration of the of the technol technological possibilities of UE5 what? to date. Like it what? is fucking gorgeous. I'm not fucking around here. This is a gorgeous looking game. Um, but you, but you, you you say that almost like it's an asterisk, and I'm trying to understand. Like, I know you're gonna beat me up, and it's just technical. But RoboCop, yeah. what does that now, mean? Just, just my, say it looks good. It just it looks really good. It's a great technology demonstrator. I think that more people should pay attention to it. It sounds you, like what you're saying is like for, the textures are incredible and the lighting is incredible. I mean, the animations are trash, but it's technically beautiful. I don't no, care. he's you've oh. just made him scared to be himself, Brad. That's all he's saying. No, <laughs> you 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 are terrifying. Anyway, well, uh, uh, my actual <laughs> award goes to hi-fi rush yes the yes. visual design of this fucking world that's built to a rhythm how everything matches up to the beat how colorful and expressive and that's the anime ever made <laughs> uh, the animations like oh my god everything about hi-fi rush is gorgeous just something True. it True. is more that game should have never been shadow dropped. That game should have had like a six month lead time between announcement and release right. date because right. people right. needed to see and learn about this fucking video game. And they I, would have never played it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I no, the, best thing, the best thing that that game had going for it was the shadow drop uh, is in terms of like marketing. It's such a fine sell line. Success, like, drop can, can sell can success. Kill, you know? or, I, I mean, I'm with Brad here. I think the shadow drop could have, could have been in any other, with a lot of other games that could have killed it. But for whatever reason, the combination of that game with a shadow drop, I think only, is what exactly what it could have killed it, but I'm pretty confident that Microsoft was shadow dropping it because they didn't believe in it. And you know what? Fuck you. The game you know happened what? to be really, really great. And that, and that backed up the shadow drop. And the fact that they're they it shadow drop such a great game, they're but... gonna do it again, baby. Because they're doing it, they're doing that same event in the next couple of weeks, and they're already really? building it up and stuff. And I'm, I'm almost like, dude, they're gonna like, they're gonna now do it intentionally with the like with the intention. Like, although, what if they shadow drop Silk Song? <laughs> Fuck it. No, no. There's there there actually is a rumor going around that there is gonna be some kind of shadow drop for them, but like. No, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a genie back in the bottle, rush. though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Silk Song is never coming out because it's a meme and memes are funny. Yeah, but like, let's like, counter pick it and throw away our league. Like <laughs> any anyone who decided not to play Hi Fi Rush, fucking shame on you. Wait, Honestly, I, you're ta I, literally I talking to some people here. Yeah, hey, uh, go fuck yourself, Chris Davis. <laughs> yeah, two go and a half fuck yourself, away from Chris my computer, Davis. asshole. <laughs> okay, hey, everybody, look, calm yeah. down. Everybody calm down. You had 10 months to play it in 2023. Play Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush is an excellent video game. All right, moving yeah, right what along. What if you watched that first trailer and you were just kind of like, eh, and then never played it? Well, I mean, you're still shame. Wrong. It's fine, but I'm not going to shame you for having not played it. I mean, That's I didn't play it because I don't sit in front of my PC. Sorry. Uh, um, all well, right. I, I played, actually, I played like half of it. But, you know, I didn't finish it because I don't sit in front of my PC. Who's next? Ed. Ed is next. Best yes. Looking. So best looking game. Uh runner up I gave to Final Fantasy 16. Uh it is yeah. a masterpiece of I guess it's a technical uh masterpiece for one thing. I mean, I think you like, can also make an argument for for artistic. Yeah. Artistic. Yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. T totally my, my winner is a lot more artistic. Uh yeah. but playing 16 on a uh, OLED OLED TV was uh beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Uh, my winner is Chance of Sonar, which I'm a game playing right that now. Has an incredible art style. The colors just pop on it, and like just walking around in that in that world, there's so many vibes that you get out of it too. It could have mm -hmm. also been a, a little bit world level design, I guess. But um, generally speaking, I, I think it it fits better in the best looking uh, game category. Yeah, yeah, Beautiful. absolutely. It is a stunning looking game. Um, Look up screenshots on your phone. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Nolan, why don't you go next? If you, if that's okay, you're abstaining from that one. Crispy. Oh, my runner-up is Dave the Diver. 
because mm-hmm. fun Adorable. cutesy pixel graphics right we all love very them good. Very good except for brad uh, and my winner i'm going to give it to star wars jedi survivor yeah because not just because i mean the game does look pretty good like just on a technical level or whatever nerdy thing um but like the customization they added to the game was fucking sick like all the different lightsabers you could build all the different blasters you could build all the different outfits you could unlock like it was sick it and really all cool. the planets you explore in that game are really like, beautiful like they are of, they are a lot of like really stuff and pan and look around kind of moments Dude, like that that stuff that you're doing on Jetta when you're like teleporting around oh. fighting that one thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the animation. Right? Be- yeah. Because because that one lightsaber, which they made just look cool because they made it look heavy, which doesn't even make sense. But like, you know, shout out to the animations, right? Like, dude, dude, um it's so sick. You know what guard lightsabers? Been, those are cool. You know what's been stuck in my head from that game as far as just like stunning moments that maybe consider this for this category visual, too was visual? Uh, yeah, for, for visual, like there's a moment toward near the end of the game. I can't remember the name of the planet, but you come up over this kind of like hilltop and there's this huge like dog fight happening in the sky in front of you. And there's like, like all these like fighting, though. I, oh, I don't yeah. like dogs. Shut fighting. up. You know, <laughs> there's a space battle <laughs> happening in front of you. And it's just like it's it's all ha- like you're standing on this cliff and it's just like watching all this shit happen. I was like, oh, my God, this game is fucking beautiful. Yeah, um, it's, sick. it's stuck in my head. We put a lot of money that into it. that frog guy. He's cool. Yeah, the frog guy, the frog yeah, guy who everyone hates. Like, I love what? that guy. Who they like? Hate him? No, people in the game hate him. Everyone oh, in that yeah, town yeah. hates him. Like, he sucks. they're all he like, "You suck, dude! World. Get out of here!" And he's all like, "Oh, I accidentally told the Empire that." Like, oh, you're talking about Turgle? Yeah. Turgle. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what a, a name fucker. for a character, by the way, Turgle. Little yeah. fucker. That's what I call him. This new character, Turgle. All right. So um, sick. My runner-up. Mm-hmm. For best looking game is actually going to go to Atomic Heart. I think that game has a phenomenal sense of visual identity. Like it's just it's it's also sexy robots, right? Sexy robots, sexy robots. Yes, um, but like just like like I was never expecting that game to be as open as it was, and it's just like beautiful lighting, and these, I think all of the enemy designs are really really striking. Um, and I don't know. I just I found that game to have just this. I mean, it, it does it. It kind of you know it's very Bioshocky, and I think it does that that thing very 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 well. Um, but my winner, I'm actually going to give to Alan Wake Two, mm-hmm. um, on a technical level, but also because they did some things in that game that I have never seen a ga- another game do, um, like the blending of the um, CG graphics with like r- real time stuff, and like how they're like melding the two in real time. Um, and just creating these really like uh, almost hallucinogenic kind of effects. Um, live action stuff. Yeah, but it's not just live action. It's like it's no. You I said real time. I just wanted to clarify. That's what you meant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Live action. Like you're walking around in the world in engine, but there's like layered live action stuff happening in front of you. Yeah, and it's mm-hmm. just cool. it's like I've I've never. I've never seen it before. It's so, it's so fucking cool. Um, and I don't know, like just all the different environments in that game are absolutely stunning. And and I don't know, it, that was just one of those games where it's like, I I didn't know what I was really expecting from a sequel to Alan Wake, which is one of my favorite games of all time. But I I don't know if it was this, and it just kind of surprised me at every turn. Uh, so, really? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe even is... your biggest surprise. Uh, <laughs> no, we're talking. Uh, about no, no, we're, that's that category is coming What's later. What's next, Nick? Uh, well, next, next honorable we, mentions. We've, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah honorable yeah, mentions. Yeah. Lots of great um, looking games. Talos Principle Two, baby. That game's stunning. Yeah, totally. Uh, I think Dead Tears Space of the Kingdom is, is still beautiful. Dead Space Wait, Remake is a great choice oh, too. Dead Space Resident Evil Four Remake. Yeah. Um, System Tears Shock Kingdom. Remake. I thought was beautiful. <laughs> Video um, games are beautiful. True. Super Mario Brothers Wonder is also a delight. I'm surprised nobody mentioned Baldur's Gate 3 here. I think that game is beautiful. Um, no, no, no one said it. And you already said more than a title, so you lose. So fuck me. <laughs> okay. Uh, and our last uh, category for this segment is going to be best video game moment of the year. Um, go ahead, Brad. Take us. Take it away. Oh, God. Um, hey, um, 
I guess, I mean, are spoilers okay for this one? Uh, yeah, but I would just be... Here's the one thing I'll say. You could spoil stuff, but if it's like a... If it's like... Mm. like for instance, my winner is... is I'm going to try and beat around the bush a little bit because it is literally like okay. a turning point for the entire game. Well, okay, so I, I got an idea. I have an idea. Be specific. So, so... God. All... Mm. People can skip for the sake of not, of not spoiling certain things from Baldur's <laughs> Gate 3, I'll make it my runner up. That way, people who know know, and I don't spoil it for people, latecomers like you, Nick. Um, I mean, you don't, but, don't, you, dude, I'm not worried about you spoil, spoiling spoil. No, 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 but people who know will know. But man, a lot, lot of, God, where did I put the, my actual list? There it is. A um, lot of great moments in Baldur's Gate 3, and I was trying to think of, oh, God, my favorite one, hard to break it, break it down, you know, it's like the low, low, high stuff. I, I don't want to spoil anybody else's. I think the one that 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 was really my favorite was, might be like say like my second uh, Orin encounter in Act Three of like Baldur's uh, Gate uh, uh, Three because it was with that second encounter that I realized oh wait this game is doing this thing and my paranoia shot through the roof and all of a sudden I was like thinking and looking at the world differently just a yeah. not not just a cool character who's voiced by Lady D from. Uh, Resident Evil Village, by the way. Oh. Um, but like the way they integrate that your interactions with that character in Act Three is so devilishly clever. Oh, I hate and her so much. I, <laughs> I hate her so much. It's so cool. And I, I think I did talk. Did I talk about this on a podcast? Maybe I already spoiled it for Nick. But whatever. Um, I'll forget by the time I, I get there. So, so, so it was going to be my runner up, but I'm going to give my winner so I can describe it a little bit um, because I think describing it, it might explain why it's so potent but it's actually like the the end of like a dragon gaiden which um i guess i'll go ahead and spoil but it's not really that i mean it's it, it's more of the moment it's it's not a spoiler from like a story perspective but more of just like a i can't believe they did this perspective but it, it's sort of so y'all know kiryu kazuma right he's like this legendary iconic video game character not just in the world of video mm -hmm. games since the ps2 era but in universe he is like a fucking icon the dragon of dojima every yakuza who's ever lived knows him because like you know you know he's he wins every fist fight you know he's just he's an icon right he's the dragon of dojima people want to challenge him just for the sole purpose of seeing if they can beat him. And of course they cannot, right? He's just a legendary character. He's done all these legendary things throughout the course of the history of the Yakuza universe, right? And then, you know, like a dragon comes along, introduces like Ichiban, and I love Ichiban, right? Um, what's happening? I love Ichiban, but he's like more of like a silly character. Like Yakuza <laughs> 7 is crazy. But you come back around to like, like a dragon Gaiden, and, and it's about Kiryu again, and that's cool. And it's like, oh, Kiryu, lo love this man. You know, he's, he's, very you know serious and stern but you know he, he he has a silly side with like side stories but anyways in terms of like the main story he's like always kind of deadly serious and the end of this game it's crazy that that if you if you don't know what the basic plot of like like a dragon the man who erased his name he's basically agreed to let some corrupt government you know organization basically disappear him um basically you know he's dead in that universe and he wants to stay dead for the protection of of i mean basically the people he cares about which are the kids you know which is haruka and the kids of this orphanage and if you've played the series starting with like yakuza 3 there's always been this like orphanage thing uh, these kids in this orphanage that he's really cared about and he's basically like uh to the only way to keep them safe because he really got into some shit um, with unsavory people towards the end of Yakuza 6, he's like, all right, look, I'll do anything you want, you know, and they're using him, this corrupt government or, you know, this corrupt shadow organization is having him basically do all these things. And he's just like, all right, whatever, I'll do them. They're like, kill this man. He's like, uh, look, I'll do what I can. I, I got, I got to protect the ones I love. Anyways, at the end of this game, there's this moment and it's like insane. And, and I, and I don't think of like Yakuza, the developers of Yakuza, like having like, you know, it, it seemed like a very mature moment for this series where like they give him the, res how much detail I want to go into. I don't know, um, dude, you've already gone into a lot. <laughs> dude. Come on. No, I mean, I haven't actually. I mean, that, I'm just explaining like the ba basic premise of that storyline, but at, at the very end, they're like, all right, well, we set, we set up these cameras cause they were basically spying on this orphanage and using it as a threat. Like if you, if you get out of line, like, look, we're going to 
fucking threaten the people you care about. Anyways, um, at the end of the story, they're like, here, we'll give you this. You've been like a good, uh, you know, friend, you know, you kind of be friend of one of the guys agent, good, really a, a good agent for them, basically a good agent. And it's, it's footage of like, you know, these kids at this orphanage, they like find the camera, two of the kids, not even Haruka, who's like basically a surrogate daughter, two of the kids who are like all grown up and they are like, Oh, look at this camera. You know, let, what if it's like cause they call him cause Kiri Kazuma. Like, what if he's still alive? I bet he's still alive. And, and the, you know, and the university is dead, but they're, they're just like, it's almost like they're pretending and they're basically just talking about their life and saying, Oh, you know, we miss you. We miss you. And like, he's look, he's watching this footage on the iPad and you see him from behind and he just like, burst not just burst into tears he is sobbing harder than not only is this like unusual for this character like absurd right this is the dragon of dojima he starts sobbing in a more like realistic and detailed way than i've ever seen in any video game game ever and like when they finally like pan around to show him he's losing it there is like there's like snot dripping from his nose all over this like this tablet that he's looking at of this footage it it it's it's insane. It's insane that that they're showing this character in this way and in a way that I've never seen a video game character like have a breakdown. And it's like honestly like a pretty powerful moment and like a pretty like incredible. I mean, I know he's in, the in next an unexpected one. place. It's it's super unexpected and it's like wow, like this is a mature like moment in a in a like surprising turn for this character. And it's like in that moment it's like all right, like this character's silly, but like I kind of understand him now because like the whole story of this game is like he's un he's erased his name, but like everyone knows it's Kiryu, but he refuses to acknowledge that everyone knows he he's Kiryu, and in the most absurd ways he's like, no, I'm Joryu, I'm not who you think I am, I'm not him, and it's like absurd, and you realize at the end when he's just having this like breakdown, like he was just doing everything he can to like protect the people he loves. And it's like, there's like boogers, snot. It is disgusting. I can't they, stress they the take boogers enough. This icon, this legend <laughs> and like show like the and most humanity boogers. in the most detail I've ever seen in a video game. And it is fucking crazy. And this like DLC turned into a full game kind of for, you know, the last Yakuza game. Incredible, incredible moment. Um, so yeah. Yeah, nice. I mean, I recommend that game just for the ending. Honestly, it's crazy. Or just watch it on YouTube. I mean, it's gross. Or In just like, YouTube that moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mentioned the boogers. All right, turning it over, Chris Davis. Okay. Well, I'm probably gonna steal several people's thunder with my runner-up, but it obviously, in my opinion, has to be Alan Wake 2's uh, Herald of Darkness moment. That is my runner-up as well. Of. The, the the music video section of the game where it is just Don't a fucking a experience that section. comes <laughs> yeah but like it comes out of fucking nowhere you have no expectations for it it just appears and you're in it and it's and it, it's it's not incredible but it's oh it's incredible i think it's i think it's I think it's straight up incredible. Like it's this is what I'm talking about. You don't have to say you don't have to cut your own down your own thing. We believe you say it. Own it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, great moment. Nick can talk about it in a minute. I, well, I mean, for runner up as well. So I think that covers it. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. For my winner, I have to echo what Brad was saying about like a dragon, the man who erased his name, that ending, that moment from that ending is exceptional. Uh, the, uh, I was crying while I was watching it. Like, think about, this, I think about have... the, the man who was introduced to Kiryu in Yakuza six. It was powerful enough to even have an effect on this man. Yeah. I love like, that Chris it's... Davis didn't mention this when Brad was talking about it. And then we, and then we just looped back around. Now we're talking about it. He was, he was nodding and agreeing. So I was obviously they didn't show to the, I, I did not want to interrupt because it is just yeah. such an incredible event. Like seeing this man, Pouring his heart out, watching this video of these adopted children. You know, him, they're saying, "Uncle Kaz, I'm a firefighter now, and and I'm I'm I, I'm getting a job here." And he's so relieved and and happy and sad and just this tumultuous, just vat of emotion in him about ugly, his situation and his 
this ugly cry that and the boogers you don't you don't oh, see it. that in games you don't see someone get that emotional and Best it is so year. like look look this is a game that was made really quick i think it was made in like eight months or something like that like really just fucking churned out by the the yakuza team and it's like one last hurrah for for Kaz because he's going to be in the next game, but he's not the he's not the the protagonist. The protagonist and yeah. they basically said Ichiban is the guy going for it. But hey, this one last hurrah, trailer, like massive massive spoilers for the next Yakuza game. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to go into you especially. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, just like him. this is like one last moment with him. And it's like, this is him seeing him kind of walk into the sunset. Uh, it's it's emotional. I, I guarantee you just even if you have no context for any of the series games, Google that ending, watch that 10 minute sequence. You'll be bawling, too. Like, it's, it's incredible. It's just such a it's such a human moment for a character like the first few Yakuza games like his face like barely even moved because he's such a serious badass. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> to see this moment come this far. Mm. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy. And that man, he starts talking about firefighter and these kids and I'm getting emotional over here. So let's move on. And yeah. you're next. You All right. Not uh, like <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, fortunately, uh, my runner up is the entire lead up and boss fight to Bahamut in final fantasy 16. Mm. The, f like you start, that one, like you go to the, you know, the empire just took over this, the city that was like neutral or whatever. And so you like are seeing the point from the point of view of multi different characters, including like the prince, the crown prince who is, is Bahamut and like what happens to him. And then like something happens and you're like, that seems so out of place. Like, why is he going crazy? Uh, and then you find out why later, uh, after the boss fight is over, but in the whole boss fight is just like, you know how Bahamut's like special ability is mega flare or whatever. Mm -hmm. They, they do the thing where they say, that he does mega flare then giga flare then terra flare then zeta flare like it keeps going up and up and up and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger it's an incredible boss fight seriously yeah. um yeah. but my winner is to continue the trend of uh teary-eyed moments in video games um in xenoblade chronicles 3 future redeemed which was the, the expansion that came out this year um you get to replay as Shulk and Rex from Xenoblade 1 and 2, um, as well as uh, four additional new characters, one of which is a descendant or, or of a character that you played in Xenoblade 3, um, uh, one of which is uh, this person that has a similar name as someone from Xenoblade 1. But the other two characters are the kids of Shulk and Rex. Uh, it's pretty clearly laid out in the trailer. I'm not really spoiling anything here, but... Um, the kids don't know that Rex and Shulk are their parents just because of the way the circumstances of the world are. Um, and so, but Shulk and Rex do know that they're their kids. And so in the very first um, like moment where the crew finally gets together, it's very early in the game. Um, Shulk and his son, Nickel sit down and uh, Shulk is admiring Nickel's like gear um, in this world, everyone gets like uh, weapons, like special weapons that they can summon or whatever. Um, and Nicole couldn't summon a weapon. And so he basically built his own like backpack a thing that allows him to like shield people or attack people or whatever. And it has big fists. And Shulk, being his father, is admiring his uh, uh, keen aptitude for technology, um, since that was the kind of thing that he did in Xenoblade 1. And um you're you're playing through this game and you're playing as these characters that you've been with for years and years and years i started playing this game back in college like i have grown up on xenoblade effectively and it was just a beautiful moment father and son talk and shop about um uh, things and you know nickel's all depressed because he thinks it's just a tool of war and shulk says it's a tool for whatever you use it for. You used it to protect us earlier. That's like really strong and powerful. Like, um, and then uh, Shulk's hand is like is metal. It's a robot hand, and it's like creaking. And Nicole's like, "Oh, I think I have a piece in my uh, in my 
my gearbox to like help you fix this and so they're they're doing it and then you see like two characters that knowingly know that this is his son like staring at each other and smile and stuff like that it was just beautiful it brought a tear to my eye um it just reminded me of why this game this dlc is the crowning achievement of this series and um i'm sad that it's gonna be kind of probably done after this Mm. uh but it was an incredible journey the whole way through and that sounds um, like a really cool payoff it was beautiful yeah Yeah. that entire dlc is uh it's cool payoffs after cool payoffs so awesome um no one did you want to contribute to this category okay yeah uh so uh unlike um brad and chris davis and ed uh i came here to laugh not to feel (laughs) <laughs> uh so my best gaming moments uh from 2023 my runner up um is actually going to go to uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Um and it's essentially multiple moments, but it's that moment where you spend a whole lot of time building a contraption and then it it just doesn't work out the way you expected. It's that like, oh, I'm going to like I'm going to help yeah, the, totally. the sign guy, uh, you know, hold up the sign and you spend all this time and you're like, go. And it just completely collapses. Or you're going to, you know, build something to get across a gap and it just goes completely awry. And that kind of leads into <laughs> all of the incredible inventions that people built online mm-hmm. uh, using the mechanics in the game. And a couple I tried to recreate on my own. Uh, but yeah, it just just the the way they have some pretty solid mechanics in that game uh, gave me a lot of good like laughs of like you know like just like things just completely going wrong uh, when I expected I them to so just dumb. work out. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. just like why, like why did I think that would work? Uh, Once you find out that the control rod like uh, allows you to control mm-hmm. fans or whatever, it just like yeah. completely changes the game for you, and you're like, uh, oh, I can fly oh, literally cool. anywhere I want. It's incredible. Those, those are helpful. Um, did did, did so it yeah, just break up for anybody else, or was that just me? I think just you. Okay, cool. That's all that matters. Never mind. Continue. Um, and then my winner um, uh, for uh, best video game moment uh, is actually going to be from Dave the Diver, mm. uh, specifically uh, Duff's like dream sequence, <laughs> uh, because I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> completely out of left field oh man um, while it is a you know fairly light-hearted fun game um just to all of a sudden uh you know duff the you know the weapons you, you, creator in the game has that dream and all of a sudden he's at like a k-pop or a j-pop concert and it turns into a rhythm game um <laughs> they like with you giving you scores and stuff it's just completely out of left field uh, robin I, actually I so watched much fun. on me playing it during that moment and was like <laughs> I thought you were playing Dave the Diver, and I was like, I am. I am. <laughs> and that's yeah. Like, I posted like a very like cropped version of that thing uh, in Discord when I played it, and I was like, I bet nobody can tell me what game I'm playing right now. Isn't that from? <laughs> uh, isn't uh, isn't that dream brought on by his like cuddle pillow too? Yeah, he he has yeah. a, he has a a body pillow. Uh, yeah. Like that, because yeah, he's really obsessed with. I forget her name now, like Ch- Cherry or something, uh, some idol or whatever. Like one of your first missions from him is going to recover because he had bought a, a statue of her online and it got uh, the ship crash and you had to go get it for him. Uh, that's but right, yeah, that's like right. he was, he, he's really into idols. Um, and yeah, so he has a <laughs> dude, it's it is so much fun. Uh, but yeah, that moment, like I said, I just the whole time my like mouth, like uh, you know, on the floor, gap yeah. jaw, just because yeah, I had no I, like, yeah, it was great. All right, uh, crispy. Whoa, okay. Um, my best video game moment. I'm going to give my runner up to Armored Core Six. Mm. Um, there's a lot of really cool moments in that game that just kind of derive from the gameplay of it. Uh, specifically for me, the coolest, the part that I was just like vibing with the most i was like this is super sick is um there's a couple points in the story where they make you fight uh like wings of 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 spaceship like starships like like full-on like star cruisers yeah and it's super sick because you're just like flying along the hull like taking out the guns uh like like mounted on it and then just like landing in front of the bridge and like cutting it off and like destroying the whole ship in a single blast like it's so cool it's so gundam it's amazing but my uh best video game moment i'm gonna give to zelda tears of the kingdom and i mean 
there's a lot of moments I could give it to. There's a lot of uh, a lot of moments in that game that just kind of like come naturally from your playthrough of like you know putting two and two together and discovering something new. But for me, I'm going to say the first time I went into the depths. Mm, I'm going to say yeah. that first like 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 jumped off of a sky island. Flew down, saw one of the chasms, flew into it, dived all the way through it, landed in the depths, and then had the realization of like how big. Oh it my was. god! Of like, yeah, <laughs> this is like everywhere. This yeah. is insane. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. That that game. Yeah, special. It is special. All right. Um, my runner-up I mentioned was the Herald of Darkness moment. Alan Wake Two, I think, is phenomenal, and. Um, it was very, very close to being my winner. But I, 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 the moment that I haven't been able to stop thinking about all year long was actually from Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And this is one of those moments where I don't... This is one of those things where I don't think I want to spoil it um, explicitly for people who are listening. But there is, um, there is a turn for a particular character that was completely unexpected. Um, like... <laughs> no, not Turtle. Turtle's it's, betrayal. It's a, it, yeah, it's a it's a major character that you're you play. not spoiling. Oh. Do you want me to spoil? I, I almost it? said I almost said it too because I I like well we'll talk we'll talk about it in the next category. How about let me that? just say this. There, okay, let me just say this. There is a there is a betrayal that happens in the game, and I it doesn't the but the moment is not that I that I'm referring to that I loved was not the betra- necessarily the betrayal because the betrayal came. The, the betrayal was something I was kind of like, ex- I was almost anticipating. I was like, I have my suspicions kind of thing. Um, but there was a no- there was a second part of that reveal that completely just took my breath away. I was like, what the fuck? Um, which I just, I don't, I can't, I can't even fathom spoiling it for someone. Uh, it it was Rick the door technician, wasn't it? it? Yes, it was Rick the door technician. No, no, I'll just say this. If you've played, you know what I'm talking about. It involves a lightsaber. Um, and it comes right after it comes. It comes right. This star, the star, 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 star moment involves a lightsaber. Yes, Wait, right. what? No, they wouldn't do that. It, not not a saying, star Wars if you, game. If you've played the game and you know what happens in the story, you know what I'm talking about. It, it's a moment that comes right after kind of this, the shakeup, right? Um, and it, it is just, I don't know. I, just, I'm gonna stop there because I, I, I couldn't imagine spoiling it for people because I, I have been. Th- it is, it is one of my favorite. Star Wars moments of all time. Well, get period. ready because I'm going to spoil it in the next category. So, <laughs> okay. oh. <laughs> if, if, if it's a boss fight and he says the name of the boss fight, then he's it's kind not of, that. Well, it, it well, it, I mean, fight, it is a but... boss fight, but it's the story moment. Don't worry. Yeah. If you're listening to this podcast, very frustrated that Nick is just kind of <laughs> pussyfooting around about it, just yeah, hang on. Pussyfoot. We'll get to um. it. Okay, I'll, fine. I'll I'll just fucking say it. If you're worried about spoilers, no, fast forward a little I'm bit. Spoil it. Okay, yeah, fine. Like I'll let Crispy spoil it. Crispy spoil. All right. So, <laughs> let me just say, I'll, all I'll say is the moment that Crispy is going to spoil in a few minutes is, um, it is, without question, one of my favorite moments in all of Star Wars. Period. And I've, I've taken in a lot of Star Wars content over the years, and I love those movies. I love. There's just there's awesome. a lot of cool moments. It was. It was better than anything I think they ever did as far as like twists or turns or whatever in, in the movies. I, it's just, man, fuck. The, fuck. I mean, it floored me. My jaw was on the floor. I don't, so. I don't co-sign. You're that saying thing, it's a better insane. twist slash moment than <laughs> like, than, that's insane, no, dude. I am your father. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of the moments Damn. that broke pop culture, like right. forever. <laughs> I knew you were going to latch onto a moment like that, but I'm just saying. You said it, all of Star Wars content, Nick. You said all it of is, it. I mean, I mean, here's the, here's the problem is I can't remember how I felt the first time I, 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 We're just fucking with you. So, we get it. Yeah. Uh, but this is in this is a moment that I think is going to stay with me for a very, very, very long time. Um, and make it, it was the thing that made me go, "Holy fuck!" I can't. I hope there's another. This I hope to make a third game. So. I get what you're doing. That's a I, wait, 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 I, Yoda cries When <laughs> Yoda cries burger. Nick Nick is sabotaging me. Is what he's doing. Like oh. he because he, he knows I'm going to say it. 
he wants to build it up to be like this is the greatest moment in all of me, western fiction in in <laughs> in 500 years of western civilization this is the greatest moment in literature and i'm gonna say it and be like yeah it was pretty cool runner <laughs> up, <laughs> runner up. <laughs> Wait, is it your runner up in the next category or is it i your don't winner? fucking know nick what is well, it can't be matter? anymore jeez it's not. Yeah, it is my runner up because guess what my fucking winner is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do honorable mentions for this category and then cut to break. Um, I got it. Let's go. You know, all I'll say is I mentioned this a long time ago when we we're talking about first time at Baldur when I first talked about Baldur's Gate three, and there was a moment where I I just did a, I did a random. I, I thought I was gonna fail a battle, I and I, I and I did a, a random push <laughs> against an enemy, and he fell off of a rafter and straight into this like tiny hole. It was like it was like the uh, the. Uh, Firing the missile into the exhaust port on the Death Star. It was just like, it was amazing. Every dice roll in Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> yeah, there we go. The, the chance, one. the message, the ending of Chance of Sonar, I'll put it that way. Okay, that's cool. Was, uh, that's cool. Going to the that is, but I'm getting there. Sex! Going sex to the with a mind flare! Oh, God. You had sex, oh. you had sex with him? What? You didn't? <laughs> no. No, <laughs> I watched me fall. All right, cut the break. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, I should, I should my runner up. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting I... struck by lightning and lethal company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had sex with a vampire. I had sex with a mind flare. I had sex with a devil. Sorry, two devils. Uh, at the same time? <laughs> at the, no. at the Harley. Uh... Yeah, I could not, right? Yeah. Oh God! Fuck. <laughs> That's a good video. Game. You you only go Let's to go hell break. once, right? Let's go to break. Like... Right, we're gonna cut the break, but uh, we're gonna do two samples from our soundtracks of the year. Let's do. Uh, why don't we start with with Nolan and Crispy? Nolan, do you want to set up your soundtrack of the year, and then Crispy can, and then we'll cut the break. Sure. Um, so uh, my soundtrack uh, of the year is gonna go to Dave the Diver. Mm. Um, a, a very soothing um nice soundtrack to listen to uh the particular one i chose i think was uh darker trenches uh that's when you get a little bit deeper uh but it's just uh it's very chill music to listen to cool 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 and crispy uh i feel like mine's pretty self-explanatory it's baldur's <laughs> gate 3 specifically it is uh yeah yeah it's, House of Hope. it's, yeah. it's raphael's final movement it movement? came out of nowhere like what well, movement. Yeah. So good. what dude he's like like he's like rapping at you while you're kicking his ass and you're like this is kind of fire <laughs> like <laughs> brad you so you, over the weekend you streamed that and yeah. watching your face light up <laughs> as the as the lyrics started was so good yeah Dude, All right, so, so fun. during the break, enjoy these quick samples from the Dave the Diver and the Baldur's Gate 3 soundtrack. When we come back, oh, we're going to do best storytelling, best new boss fight, and best new character, so stick with us. Hey, everyone, <laughs> welcome back to our 2023 awards show. Let's get, let's let's push on. Uh, we got three more there's... categories. To... Oh, my God, Crispy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's what I was going for. I'm sorry. We're a family show. Got? Family what we got, show. What we got going? First category is best storytelling. Uh, okay. That's pretty self-explanatory. So why don't we get started, Brad? What's your runner-up? You know, I haven't played many games with uh, great don't stories this year. Don't you dare talk about Dragon um, Guy here. I haven't. No, it's not, uh, actually. Uh, I've talked about that in Best Moment. Nick, do you remember? I, know. Should I, I, get I do. I do um, remember. You dumb bastard. It's not. No, no, no. Uh, my runner-up is... Um, I have the wrong list. Hold up. My runner-up is El Paso Elsewhere. I think mm. it's the thing... Fuck. It's the, that's this Max Payne style throwback with just exceptionally compelling storytelling, just absolutely extraordinary. I never thought that that would be like my biggest takeaway from this game. I just wanted to like you know s slow dodge and, and or slow mo shoot things in the air. And man, the story you know is incredible. Um, play it if for that only. Um, and um, but my favorite storytelling of the year is of course Baldur's Gate three. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure we'll, we might all bring it up a little bit in this category, but just exceptional storytelling, not just from like a I writing winner. and performance perspective, just incredible characters, incredible story, like like incredibly like well paced. Honestly, it's like always kind of like gripping and exciting, and from from like the smallest like 
side quests you know we've always talked about like witcher 3 as like having these incredible side quests i feel like you find these every 10 feet in Baldur's gate 3 it's so dense and you're always stumbling into like crazy things but just the amount of like control like the confidence that the game has to give you the ability to kind of approach these moments in the story any way you want through your the build of your character through your failed and successful dice rolls just how you want to play it and 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 there's a lot of freedom there's a lot of freedom in how you approach this story and like the game it's i sometimes i feel like it's just a house of cards like barely hanging on and sure enough you know i it, it took a lot of patches to iron out a lot of those gl- glitches and they're still working on it but like what they've constructed is nothing short of extraordinary More it is an absolutely remarkable and you know every dice roll in a story moment is exciting and you know I can go on and on, you know, listing off moments. My entire like best moments category could have been, you know, 50 moments from from Baldur's Gate. And I know you haven't seen a lot of them, Nick, but they're um, they're I've uh, played 50 hours of it. I've seen a lot. Not not, maybe not the specific ones you're referring to, but I've seen enough to know that this game is fucking incredible. And as uh, someone. No, 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 I know the game's great, but I mean, like specifically the storytelling, like those moments like early on when, you know, you're playing Dark Urge and you just killed someone or or just moments like are Lizelle and Shadowheart like actually going to kill each other here? Yeah. Uh, and then you start rolling the dice and going, uh, you know, the fact that you can just attack anyone in the game, like, yeah. uh, it, and it just lets you do it. And there's moments where like, I'm having these crazy story moments and I'm like, okay, cool moment. Oh, this character. Oh, what a revelatory moment. These people are, are okay. Yeah. Oh, he's in my camp. Oh, this is great. Oh, you know, small spoilers oh will's father great oh yeah. they had a moment together and it's like wait and i did this on stream it's like it actually is just gonna let me attack him right now of all times and all moments and all places i could just attack just will's father what the fuck happens if i do that and sure enough the game just lets you and it was actually kind of interesting to see who in camp decided to like side with me and actually say you know what fuck that I'm killing you. So <laughs> that was up. fucked up what you just did. So the game up. is crazy. And you know, maybe it's Chris honestly kind of overwhelming we'll about Dude, so when I stopped to like try and think about just the logistics of making a game like this. And in, in, like impossible. It's in, wait. It, instead of talking about how crazy the scope of this game is, let's just talk about that moment where Volo's like, hey man, I don't really know surgery, but I've read about it. Let me help you out. And you're like, cool, stick an ice pick in my eye. He does, pops your eyeball out, and then you're like, what the fuck, man? And then he's like, wait, I have a magic replacement for you. Here you go. And pulls and it out of his pocket. <laughs> yeah, and sticks it in your fucking skull. And your then you gone. have a and then you have a permanent buff of like sea invisibility. And then like oh. 90 hours later, you're in a combat encounter where that saves your fucking ass. And you're like, Volo, you son of a bitch. <laughs> That's hilarious, Crispy, because I have chicken out of that exact scenario about six times. I've if, been like, should I do it? No, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. It is it. it is it is the most insane thing. You are a madman if you do it. You're a fucking crazy asshole psychopath if you do it. I was playing a weirdo fiend warlock, so I was like, Yeah, this is maybe something I'd do. You uh, well, you peer pressured me into doing it on stream. I know, I know. I yeah, like I had you had to see you aren't you glad you saw that content though? No, like I am, I am honestly truly one of the best moments of the year. But like the the way that like you have experienced enough of that game and you know they're planting the seeds of going like dude you gotta get this tab pull, pull out but but you know enough about it to know like there is no way not only am I not getting this out, he is definitely not going to be. He's the one not the guy to do it. So, so <laughs> if you if you go along with it, you have to be truly unhinged. Yeah. And sure enough, it rewards you. For Wouldn't that be funny if he shit. actually gets it out in the credits roll? <laughs> Dude, I mean, and 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 like the game has demonstrated to you that like there's no end of dead ends like that where it's like, yeah, he's just going to kill you and you're going to have to reload. <laughs> like, and yet this one time. Oh, man. I, I, I watched the one where Auntie Ethel does it and holy <sighs> shit, it's fucked up too. She it, is maybe up there for character of the year, honestly. She's incredible. Hey, hey, real quick, so just to confirm, this is Brad Crispy, this is also your winner. This is my winner. And this is also my winner. I just want to make sure I'm clear about that as well okay. because I think that I you don't this even game... have to play the game for longer than like 
you can within like an hour of starting this game, it's easy to see why yeah. the storytelling in this game. And is I so get special. why you would say that, Nick, because you've only played like an hour of it. Uh, you bitch. <laughs> well, he, he says <laughs> fifty hours. Dude, this what game, is game this is? game is like Shakespeare. Has made me feel every color on the spectrum of human emotion, like from happiness to sadness to like like grief to joy to fear to like being all boned up like it is it has everything it is such everything. a funny game this is literally one of the funniest games i've ever played in my life it's so it funny. But also without hilarious. without like without sacrificing one iota of its like drama or 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 just Ooh. intensity of its story i i it's it somehow manages to walk the line it's between like somewhat comedy serious and, and yet really funny. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it, it walks the line beautifully. Well, I the love stakes it. are so high. The the stakes are so absurdly high that it's almost kind of funny. So when you lead it to those moments with Volo trying to say say <laughs> get the apple from your skull, oh, also you just lose an eye. Shout out to the narrator. The I guess oh my like god. the, the oh my god. dungeon yeah. master, whatever the fuck you want to call her, yeah. like. That yeah. she alone is like for me the reason why this game is just a an incredible like inc is incredible okay. for its storytelling like like it it did they somehow managed to take Dungeons and Dragons something that has historically been obviously has so much freedom because of the nature of playing at tabletop and you have a dungeon master and you play with friends and you have all of this freedom to do it they somehow managed to condense all of that into a video game and somehow still capture like a shocking amount of that freedom in this in, completely different in, format. It's, it's not it's only insane. Is the narrator such an incredible, like performance, like incredibly written performance, the way she adds her own voice to some moments of like, mm. where it sounds a little judgy, you know, it's like, wait, you're a narrator. Okay. <laughs> no. you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Subtle and brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you try to talk to a dead body that doesn't want to talk to you and she's like, it has nothing to say to you. And you're like, okay, all right. Thank you. I can see that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Uh, Chris Davis, you're, you're next. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh, you're oh, muted. No, Chris no. Davis, you're, you're muted, muted, Chris. Oh, that, that oh, would help no. find muted. That's oh, okay. Were, I, just, I was, uh, so I was muted for the stream. Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, get it? okay. Because it's voice acting. No. It's okay. My... <laughs> <laughs> uh no to, to echo y'all uh Baldur's Gate 3 is my runner up. Uh, great story. Uh the character interactions, the narrator, like what you're just saying. Uh the little judgmental little bits of like what I'm doing when I'm talking to animals, talking to the dead, talking to just the most unsavory motherfuckers possible uh within the city of Baldur's Gate. Like, yeah, it's all good. Um but, but my winner is Sea of Stars again. Uh, oh, I, it is a good story. It is a good story. It is, it is a great, fairly lighthearted, but also surprisingly deep story this told that has direct connections to the messenger, which I love, but hints at just... They, they take the concept of the universe and just drastically expand it to to the point to where every like three or four hours you're not getting a revelation but you're getting a greater appreciation appreciation for the world and the characters there in it i will um, say this that, that a knowledge of the messenger is not necessarily required to appreciate the story no, in this absolutely either, not so. but that being said like if i was to put an addendum to this like i would say like the way way in which the storytelling was created like look, there there's there's an easter egg if you 100 percent the game i mean 100 percent everything possible there's an easter egg that you can hunt down that is basically a developer pouring his heart out and talking about his story of making the messenger and this game and like the emotional fallout of his journey in making it. Um, That's actually pretty cool. Uh, Wander song did it first though. Uh, they did what, that exact same thing. It was pretty crazy. Oh, 
Okay, but whatever. Like this is you you can feel the love they put into the storytelling and you feel for every single character in this game and just how they hint at just how grand this universe can be. Like they've got a fucking IP that they could do so much with now. It's so fucking cool. It is it is a very cool uh very cool game with with a cool cool, mm. cool story, lots of great characters. Mm. Uh good stuff, good stuff. Um Ed. Yes. Okay. So I think I've been very clear. I did not play a lot of Baldur's Gate 3 this year. I played about 15 hours. Um, Disqualify this man. I know uh, also like Brad in the year that I didn't play a lot of story games. Um, I I was kind of a little bit scraping the bottom of the barrel, so to speak. Uh, However, um, I would say (laughs) my runner up um was final fantasy 16 okay. i think that the main core story of that game is excellent um I actually it delivers agree despite kind the fact of that the whole... very disappointed in that game as yeah well. i mean it, it it delivers the story the core story the whole way through um including the ending when i when i got on the podcast and brad was like you after bahamut it's basically like all downhill from there or that's the highest moment i was like i, I I mean, maybe that's true, but you still have some really cool boss fights and some uh, and some cool moments later, um, some very sad moments later that that I now I'm remembering. Uh, but anyway, um, number one for me is as I kind of hinted at earlier, Xenoblade Chronicles: Future Redeemed, mm. uh, being able to bring together these characters from three different games, three different games who spent, I mean. Each of those games is like 60, 70, 80 hours long, right? Yeah. He spent a lot of time invested in these characters. And um, when at the end of two, in a Xenoblade 2, where you realize the connection between Xenoblade 1, you're like, oh my gosh, that's crazy, you know? And I was kind of hoping for a little bit more to get that in Xenoblade 3. You got it, but not quite to the same level. But the DLC <laughs> redeems um, mm-hmm. the third game in my eyes, uh, where you it's the final swan song. You get explanations for like how the world came to be and stuff like that. And I think it's a it's a beautiful magnum opus for this series. And um, I'll talk about it later. But the music in these games is excellent. And awesome. That's that's what I'll say about that. Very mm-hmm. nice musical right, storytelling. Chris, They're really crispy. Your your moment has come to spoil. Here the we moment. go. My runner up and for storytelling like of the year is Star Wars Jedi Survivor because, like, hmm. you know, like today when I was making my awards list and I was going through all those games, I forgot that like I loved Star Wars Jedi Survivor so much at the time that I had like been writing notes to myself in my doc like for this moment that i'd completely forgotten about like what my best boss fighting like best moments and everything i was like yeah this this is an awards game this is gonna be great right um okay what you are about to hear from crispy and myself is a major star wars jedi survivor spoiler if you don't want a major twist in that game spoiled for you i highly recommend skipping ahead a few minutes consider yourself warned I will echo what Nick was obliquely alluding to earlier in that, like, Sorry. there are great new characters in this game. One of them is Bode, who's like, I, at, when you first meet this guy, you're like, who's this fucker? Like, who's this fucking jack off? It's like some handsome muscle man with a jetpack and guns. And I, like, he's got this whole rocketeer thing going on. And I'm like, does, I've always said star Wars needs a new rocketeer guy who isn't just Boba Fett. Like they need a rocketeer type guy. He's, he's like perfect. Han Solo star and Wars. Boba Fett had a baby. He's, he is the rock. He's rocketeer without a helmet. Like yeah. he, he's like, he just needs, we, we need, we need that guy. Right. Like that character archetype needs to be represented. Here he is. I was so excited to meet him. I was like, this is sick. He's cool. You play that story and like those characters are so good. They're all firing on all cylinders in this game. And by the time you get through that game, you're like, man, Bode is cool. Like, I really like him. I love his dynamic with Cal. They have good chemistry. Like they're good buddies. They're BFFs. And then Bode betrays you. And then he Uh... sells you out to the Empire. And you're like, what the 
fuck, Bode. And you go to fight him. You pull your lightsaber, and he pulls out a lightsaber. And you're oh, like, red what? One. And you're like, what the fuck? And you find <laughs> out that Bode wasn't a, was like Cal, an apprentice during Order 66, except he and his master were working for Republic Intelligence at the time. Republic Intelligence rolled over into Imperial Intelligence, so the guy who was looking out for him before when he was a Jedi is now like a bigwig in Imperial Security, and he's using Bode as like an asset to find these Jedi rebels. And it's fucking wild. And like, he's like, it, no! It, no, no! bone and it breaks your heart and you're like no he's evil and then you find out like what his whole situation is like what his deal is and you meet his like eight-year-old daughter and you're like oh no dude he's such a good dynamic like you're like no dude like oh god Ah." and you meet this little girl and you're like i love your father but i'm gonna kill him like i have to kill him like it's fucking wild man like it's such a good game and it really it roped me in more than i thought it would and you know i was i mean i was ready for a good star wars story but it like this is like the first star wars thing i'm consuming after andor right and this is like kind of completely different gear than andor right this is back to like high adventure and lightsabers and force powers and i was like i don't know if i'm ready for this and it won me over that's so good yeah so maybe what i was trying maybe what i was what I should have said earlier, as opposed to like that one particular moment being like the be- one of my favorite, my favorite moment in all of Star Wars. Maybe what I should have said is the story as a whole, largely in part because of that moment and what happens after it. This story is my favorite Star Wars story. I mean, it's good. Jedi involving the Empire. And, you know, it's just it, it is like surprisingly good. And like, I really like the first game. I don't think the story was that good in the first game. It wasn't I wasn't level, expecting sure. I wasn't expecting much from Jedi Survivor and then it came out and was like this is sick. If this wasn't the year that Baldur's Gate 3 came out, it might be my favorite story, you know? Yeah. Like but but that moment that Crispy just described Russian. I've I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since it happened. Dude, like like the lightsaber, the part like he you find out because he like blocks your attack with a lightsaber and you're yeah, like what yeah, the yeah. fuck? You're like what the fuck? It's crazy. It's so good. <laughs> oh, God damn. Such a fucking amazing moment. Uh, thank you, Crispy. I, th- I'm actually glad I didn't spoil that because I think you did a much better job of, of explaining that moment than I probably ever could have. So, oh, thank yeah, you. such an thank amazing moment. Thank you for moment. letting me. Uh, so my, like I said, Baldur's Gate 3 is my is my winner. And I honestly, I would probably say Jedi Survivor is my runner up, but I, I have to, th- I have to, to, throw bone here to Alan Wake 2 as far as storytelling goes because I think Remedy upped their game dramatically for this game. I think I think Alan Wake 2 is their best game that, that they've done. Um and I think storytelling is is a major component of that. Um I mean we've talked about world design. I think it's excellent. I think I think the combat and the mechanics are are excellent and the things they have you doing are excellent, but like the way they they they've created this entirely new character of Saga Anderson and woven her story in with Alan Wake and given them both dramatically different sets of mechanics to deal with their different situations, if you know what I mean, Um, and how those things tie into their stories specifically. um, It's just cool. Like, and, and those things I'm referring to on Saga Anderson, she has, she has her mind palace thing, uh, which I think is just a really, really cool thing. And, And I don't think enough games really delve into like detective work, as much as I as much as I wish, and I think this is one of the best games to ever have done that. And um, on Alan Wake's side, he has like he's literally trying to write himself out of the dark place, which is you know where he's been trapped since the since that first game. Yeah. Um, so he's so you can like change and manipulate the environment, change the story by like finding these pieces of a manuscript and then like typing them out and like changing literal reality in front of you it's it's so fucking cool um and it just they just they ratchet everything up to 11 i I, you know i remedy is i think such a talented studio but they've been i think fairly kind of predictable or like maybe or maybe linear in their thought process when it comes to like storytelling um and this is just they've 
they swung for the fences and they they kind of pulled it off. They they did some really truly unexpected stuff. So yeah. I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Alan Wake two as my runner up, which I only talked about as much because Baldur's Gate three was talked about which, a lot. Already. Can I add just one quick thing to that? Because uh, this would have been an honorable mention for me, but I really was kind of surprised how much I enjoyed the antagonism between Saga and Alan, how they built this up, how they she blames him for everything that's going on. And he's just so desperate to, like, apologize and try to figure a way out of the dark place like that relationship they built together. It's good stuff. Which is strange considering they're occupying two different realities. <laughs> but, yeah. But they find a way. It's cool. It's and, such and a cool More than thing. just that, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next category is best boss fight. And again, going back to what Brad said at the beginning, there are no runner ups for this category. Or actually, no, do you want to do honorable mentions up. for storytelling? No. We, keep, we good? Uh, just Talus Principle, too. Talus yeah. Principle. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dave the Diver. Dave the Diver is a good one. <laughs> for no okay. stakes. For cozy. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A space for the unbound. My Just best boss unbound. fight. Um, got the one best boss fight. I mean, honestly, I don't know if I had a hard time thinking about it, but I, I it was more. I just really want to shout out this game because I still think they're they're some of the best of the best when it comes to boss fights. And this one was my favorite from this game. Was the Lou Booth boss fight in mm. Wong, <laughs> Fallen D- Dynasty? The, the first is, one or the second one? Well, look, I was only not get hard up the second one. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, wait, <laughs> I, I agree though. The wait, first wait, one what's really the good. second one? The, he's on his horse. Yeah, that's the first one. Okay, that's yeah. the one I experienced. Yeah, uh, I put down the game afterwards, but it was such a cool fight to see Lubu, who's this legendary, like you know, Dynasty Warriors famous Lubu. You know, not just Dynasty Warriors, obviously. Um, you know, Three Kingdoms era character and it's such a so team ninja is so good at the at that sort of boss fight you know like the the boss fight that's like relatively your sized right like they're experts at that honestly i mean that's the old neo series and he's just to me he stood out the most he fights on his fucking horse and he has this giant huge fucking you yeah know, it's crazy know what they call it and like he's he's using it to like fling himself up in the air like while he's on his horse and he's like shooting all the like 10 yeah. arrows at you at once and it's a game where you're like parrying and like constantly uh and it just feels really good and you eventually knock him off his horse and his horse is still like running around like the battlefield while you're fighting him and you're trying to like not have the horse run over you and there's times where you get him knocked Lubu knocked onto the ground and you're going up for a death pull animation and i swear to god and i've confirmed this because i've looked up footage because i knew it was on purpose that horse fucking ran me down to save yeah. Lubu. he that does motherfucker it's just it's just <laughs> to me it just stood out as the coolest boss fight in a game and from a studio that is so good at that kind of boss fight and it's you know that i have my misgivings like, about Ry- rise of the ronin but one thing i always look forward to is that sort of boss fight uh because they're so good at it that that is one of the um it's the boss it's the traditional dark souls the boss fight where like you kind of do all right for the first ones like they're they're pretty easy or whatever but then you hit that wall like lubu oh, is yeah. the wall and it's yeah, like so classic storytelling from the three kingdoms uh, games and and dynasty warriors that he would be the wall that because yeah. of course it has to be him right um he's yeah, yeah it was good the, yeah he's inf- infamous lubu but yeah lubu cool. lubu all right, uh, Chris Davis. Oh God. Okay this this was a kind of a tough one for me. Um, we need to come back to you. It sounds you like you might answer? be indecisive. Well, indecisive. I okay. So, all right, because oh, I I wanted don't, to don't say the one I know you're gonna say. Okay, what I you okay. Say? All right, so runner up. No, 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 this this is the category. Oh, no, no runner, runner ups. This is, no the, runner ups this, this is the this is the one. Like you only so get one. The, the one. You only the get one. one. Okay. Someone right. didn't get the memo. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna look like a fucking edgy teenager. Uh, the final boss fight from uh, High Five Rush. Oh like, yeah. Okay. Not not yeah, to. What's wrong with that? I mean, it's just what's like because it, it's set to nine inch nails and it's like okay, it's. Oh it's, yeah. So there's another boss like fight. We hate nine inch nails, nails the, around here. What, what, what the is? Black Keys have an excellent have a boss fight in that game. Like like the yeah. music, like the, the really? licensed music in that. Yeah, the the licensed music in that game is excellent. And yeah, it's, it's usually used to great effect. 
It's yeah. And it, it honestly, like that was the perfect use of that song for that boss fight. It just matches up so well for everything you've learned in the game, everything it's taught you for the mechanics, how, how you, how it teaches you to use all of your side characters for their special abilities and just the right times for just the right moments. Like it's, it's just a great fight. Um, nothing really to expand upon it beyond that. There's a really great, honestly, I thought about Hi-Fi Rush as well. And I was like trying to, I was trying to pick one singular boss fight from Hi-Fi Rush and I really couldn't settle on, on one. So I was just like, nah, fuck it. I'm moving on to something else. Yeah. Uh, a lot of good fights in that game. So yeah. I don't think there's a wrong answer when going from Hi-Fi Rush. So no, good, good pick. Um, Ed. Yeah. Uh, cool. So, um, I kind of hinted at a Final Fantasy 16 boss fight before um, being Bahamut. I think it's an awesome fight, but my winner is actually Titan from ah. Final Fantasy 16, where like he absorbs the, he, like eats the crystal or whatever that he's like supposed to be protecting. And then he becomes this like massive monster slash alien like thing that's like shooting tentacles at you and you're like you're like running as the tentacles as ifrit like running on the tentacles and stuff like that to like fight him and um it's i just remember a... yeah and so like a, i just remember afterwards like my wife is sitting next to me on the couch while i'm playing this and i and i i finished the boss fight and it finally says like titan vanquished or whatever and i just put down the control i'm like wow that yeah. was something else. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> that, it was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. Um, and it, like, that's not even the, the, that's the end of the fight. The beginning of the fight is you like hit him, like climbing up a mountain while you're like trying to, uh, trying to climb up away from him and fighting him the whole way and stuff like that. It, it's, it's insane. That is an insane, like multi-phase boss fight. And uh, like Bahamut's pretty close to it, but I just like my, my reaction to the end of the boss fight was enough for me to just be like, okay, that's the best boss fight I've done. You know, year. it's crazy. Like I, I'll, I'll to echo what Brad said earlier. I'm really gr glad Ed is here tonight because <laughs> it's, he's, he's reminding me that it's so strange that Final Fantasy 16 is so strange because I do think there are a lot of things that game does really well. It's surprising to me that it, kind of like overall left such a i don't want to say negative impression don't worry about it nick i'll be talking about it later i know i mean i will too <laughs> i will too but it's like he's he's specifically talking about things that i was also sharing the exact same sentiments like i was having this i was going through the same emotions and the same reactions and stuff as, as ed is describing like it does a lot of things really well it's just kind of strange to see like a lot of things done really well come together and kind of be un underwhelming. Somehow. It was a mixed bag for sure. Right. Um, and Nolan, you said you didn't have anything for this, this segment. So I guess that just leaves me and my Wait, boss fight. Chris, I didn't do boss. Oh, fight. Sorry. You're right. You're right. Crispy. I, I apologize. You go. Wow. I also have the objective best boss fight of the year. All right, go for it. <laughs> Rick, the door technician. Exactly. That's the perfect answer. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. That's the best that, one. That, yeah, that was. Do you care to elaborate for people who don't know what you're talking about? No, fuck them. No, no. Uh, no in Jedi Survivor, you uh, are attacking an Imperial base and this dude in Scout Trooper armor shows up and he's like, I'll have to hold him myself. And then they put up this big ass health bar on screen that says... Rick, the door technician, and the first time you touch him, he crumples like tissue paper yeah. <laughs> and dies immediately. Yeah, <laughs> and you just get on with your life, and you're like, "This isn't even that kind of game." Like, why? What? Like, it's, like, it was what such, is? An odd, such an odd moment, but actually just kind of charming as hell. I don't know. It's it works. It worked. The, I don't the know. thing was, you could completely bypass that fight or like move him to another platform and just disengage from him. Like you could spare Dude. his life if you wanted. Mm -hmm. I did that moment and I swear to God, I thought my game had glitched. Uh, you know, as <laughs> lovable as Rick, the door technician is, he is a fascist. So <laughs> <laughs> he gets the wall. Uh, I guess <laughs> you're right. That's true. Um, hmm. All right. So my uh, my best boss fight, I'm actually going to give to Atomic Heart. Um, a game that I do think had some pretty memorable boss fights, but I'm going to actually go with the twins, um, which is actually the final, boss, the final or yeah, the final boss of the game is kind of a dual thing with the, 
where you fight the twins, which are the two ballerina uh, robots that you see in a lot of the marketing and and whatnot. And I, I say this twofold because one, I think it's a, it's a, it's a cool fight. It's a really chaotic fight with a lot of stuff that you kind of have to juggle and and a combination of like using your your guns and your powers to kind of like you know uh, manage both of them together who are coming at you with di- from different angles and using different kinds of attacks and whatnot. And then at some point the the battle just kind of evolves and it almost feels like a bullet hell thing where there's like they're shooting lasers at different angles and different coming at you from different directions and you're having to kind of like always manage them together uh which i think just made for a really dynamic and really fun and kind of epic boss fight um but also kind of on a storytelling level uh this is what ed was maybe alluding to earlier i'm not entirely sure but the ballerinas are tied are are, i I just think are really cool conceptually (laughs) this is gonna sound kind of crass but like they're tied into they gave you a boner is what you're saying no they're tied (laughs) into the lore of the game and i think a really interesting way because like the underlying you know kind of like bioshock the whole game is built around this idea of like you know political corruption and how that ultimately leads to people you know abusing power and then it leads to this utopia falling apart or whatever and it's like these ballerinas have been reprogrammed as these like elite bodyguards for like the like the main dude you're trying to reach to like f- to take down in the game but like before they were bodyguards they were literally designed to be basically sex puppets <laughs> for like political elite in this place they would have they would have these like w- like lewd sex parties and like these were like the fucking stars of the show and they were also like ballerinas that were doing like, these like nightly performances on stage and stuff and it's just like it's so fucked up but like and then they're being they've been reprogrammed to be these like killing machines i don't know i just thought the whole the whole thing just kind of came together in this really interesting way and uh and it culminated in that just this really epic boss fight i don't know i the whole thing just worked for me um so yeah that's that's my pick the the twins i don't even think they have names other than the twins um yeah and we're not doing are we not doing no any honorable uh, mentions that was just just the one off thing so. okay definitely not for no no okay no. uh I, so I mean, if you want so, scan it i mean Jesus Christ! Oh, <laughs> Ganon at the end of Tears of the Kingdom. Well, was so hold on, good. what, what game was okay. did you fight? What game did you fight Jesus Christ in? <laughs> uh, oh man, I, that just made me think. Lots, that just made me think of a moment of the in, uh, year I could have mentioned. Well, whatever. Fuck. Yeah. Um, all right, our last character, or sorry, our last award category for the segment is going to be best new character. Take that however you will. Um, whether it's a protagonist, like a playable character or a side character, whatever you want. Uh, Brad, go oh, for it. Oh, it has to be a character. Um, <laughs> my best new character, my runner up is James Savage from El Paso Elsewhere. He's the main character. He's on his, you know, one way trip to, uh, you know, El Paso, Texas. El, El Paso, <laughs> Texas, where Jesus. his, uh, his ex is who also happens to be the, you know, Lord of Darkness or whatever. Oh, she's a vampire and she's going to end the world and she has to stop her. And, uh, you know, it's he just gives an incredible performance and you realize that it's not just a cool, like, you know, game that I it's, you know, he's like uh, he and them are unpacking like, you know, a toxic relationship that they had. And it's like it El Paso elsewhere is like a pretty incredible game uh storytelling uh wise and um he is a big part of it i mean it's really just those two characters i mean as he's descending down or through limbo from i guess he's a, it's a whole thing we can't get into it it's just a runner up play el paso elsewhere it's like really shockingly good at uh telling a story and he is an incredible character uh but my winner of course had to be from Baldur's gate i could have had every character from Baldur's gate my god but so but i'm gonna go with carla you know she's she's uh, she's my gal um of course and i the reason i you know chose you know to uh you know begin a relationship with carla is because she's the best character much better than this shadow heart lady uh carla is just Ew. she's you know my badass r- red demon barbarian lady and you know the first time i saw her scream and enter rage i knew i was in love um, but it's not just about that. She's just, she's just romance aside. She's just a really 
cool like she's a tragic character i mean she's literally a character on a timer basically because of this uh infernal engine thing that they put in her chest and she's gonna basically burn up or explode or whatever and um but at the same time she's like the most like positive character probably in that entire like story and roster she's always like fuck you know she's like she'll literally say fuck yeah sometimes when you're like you know add her to your party and you know she she gets excited about you know like they bring back characters from like Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and she's got that like kind of that super fan thing she's like cuz they're like legends in that world and she's like super excited to see them meet them and she's like I can't believe like fucking Jahira's in our party like that's crazy um just an awesome character to be around there's a lot of like you know sad tragic people a lot of like you know you know yeah, you know, there's there's some there's some downers in that party in that group. You know, people have gone through a lot. Um, they're they're funny, but she's the one that is always you know she'll bring you up. She's good to be around, even though her story's really sad. And I haven't finished that game, but we did go on a nice little date, which makes it even more sad because you know we're deeply in love, and she knows that you know she's got a timer in her chest. So we'll see. I'm a uh, just for the record, we're gonna move on, but I have not finished. I did, I did, I do have all my, all three of my stones, you know, I, I've, um, I don't think I did on stream. The last thing I did was the Gortash thing. Um, so I'm, I'm headed to like the end end game soon and Crispy, you're in a similar place. You still haven't finished. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm, um, I'm doing the murder tribunal right now. I have one. I'm, okay. I've basically done the opposite order you did. I already did Gortash. Okay. Now I'm doing okay. the murder tribunal. Okay. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I could talk all night about it, but I won't. Um, but I will talk plenty in my game of the year video. So look for that. Spoilers. All right. Carla. Um, you still haven't met her? Davis. You've met you know, Carla. No, I've, yeah, I've met her. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Uh, it Chris took Davis. a long time for Nick to meet her, but it he did eventually take, did. I think it was like hour 30. <laughs> I met her. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't even know how you do that. I just... mean, I know how. I mean, I'm 250 hours into the game. I, I play it weird and slow, and Nick does too. So when he says I'm 50 hours into the game, that was like 20 hours for normal people. But I'm <laughs> I'm one of I'm I'm a Nick, so I get it. I relate. All right, Chris Davis. Uh, well, to echo Brad, my runner-up is Carlac. Love her. She's a great character. Uh, tragic backstory to her with just juxtaposed against her kind of lighthearted and yet I don't know. I don't know. I just great character. Um, yeah. But uh favorite character from this year probably was Sarai from sea of stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's this yeah. mysterious character that you meet very early on in the game, but like you don't really get to start interacting with her until s- a bunch of hours in. And then her story slowly unravels. She's, she clearly knows more than she's telling. Um, and she's hiding things from other characters that you clearly see. Um, and then when her reveal moment happens, it's, it's not shocking, but it's, it's like, it's like, wow, they did that with this character. Uh, and you come to appreciate her in a whole other light. Um, yeah. Sarai's yeah, great. Cool. She's, she's really cool. cool. Most people say that, uh, I don't know the character that shit the the, the chef guy Garl yeah yeah Garl is yeah. a great character too Garl's great Garl yeah Garl gets a Garl, Garl gets his eye like stabbed in the first opening parts of the game and you're like right. oh he's gonna be the bad guy and he's like nope I'm just happy go lucky guy yay yeah. oh, and he's great. happy go lucky guy throughout the entire fucking game and he's like I know it's beautiful he, he, he he's like the 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 one character in the party will that will make you smile every time is Garl but like I can't Sarai help. I can't. I laugh every time because there's a lot of moments in that game where someone's like Carl or girl. And I just can't help. I, I always think of <laughs> Carl, you the know, walking dead. Yeah. The walking, walking dead. dead. Yeah. Uh, every time. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, uh, Ed. Yeah. Um, lots of great characters from games that I played this year. Um, I, Final Fantasy 16 stands out. Like Sid is an excellent character. Um, Again, great character. <laughs> Sid and Mid are both excellent characters. I even like Clive. Like, there's a character named Mid. There is a character yeah, named Sid Mid. Yeah, it's, it's, Mid. It's, it's Final Fantasy, man. Sid and Mid, play Final Fantasy she's, Four, she's, idiot. She's pretty Mid. 
The um, quests are pretty but, mid. I guess that's true. Say. Um, but my runner-up is Byron from the Talus Principle Byron. too. Oh yeah. Um, he you find out he like he's one of the yeah, original twelve that were originally. Oh sorry, he was one of the originally original twelve that like woke up uh, as part of the first. I forget what they call them or whatever, but the first civilization um, or I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and he like is low key in love with Athena, who's like the first person, and you don't really realize it until you find out later that he like feels absolutely betrayed that she w- she didn't let him in on what they were doing, um, and stuff like that. So I and I, I just love his like way of looking at the world, um, yeah. which I think is is beautiful. So that's a great choice um, because I was also surprised by just how many characters. Oh my there gosh! Were yes, that are really good. Y- Yakut <laughs> is awesome. Yeah. Uh, he has a cat. He's basically Chris Davis. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things about cats in that game. That is, yeah. yeah. Um, but my winner is the Marley from Shadow Gambit. The which okay. is the ship. Uh, um, the ship that you save at the very beginning, and you're with the entire game. Um, you actually find out she's basically the cornerstone of the entire game in the plot. Um, not she, to mention the gameplay mechanics. Well, yeah, that too. Um, so the the reason I find her to be the best character is because she's like this uh, ethereal, uh, otherworldly, like, spirit, basically. Um, and she's just in love. She's just in love with her captain. And her captain is dead. And she can't let him go. And there's multiple moments throughout this throughout the story where that comes to absolute fruition um where Gross. like <laughs> well it, no not like that <laughs> weirdo what are you doing Take no um and, uh, the no the, you have to find the captain's head or whatever and the captain's head is uh gets bewitched by the bad guy and um says unleash and that's her key to like revert time and she has to listen to the captain she has to, even though she knows she's not supposed to. And so the the set, the third act of the game is you like working through that with her as as the main character, which is Afia, the um, the navigator. That's pretty cool. And you're basically working her through getting over someone that she loved and lost. And it's, wow, I, it's I never expected that aspect from that game. It's beautiful. That, that, that makes me pretty excited to, to finally yeah. play that. Cool, so, yeah. cool, cool. All right, uh, Crispy. Oh, man. You know I put Carlac on the list. Damn it. Um, I was hoping everyone would do different Baldur's Gate characters. I, I did no put Carlac. No one's going to say Asterion? I'm going to change. No. You just shut the no. fuck up and let me goddamn talk, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. also put Asterion on the list, and I'm changing Carlac to Shadowheart because yeah. Carlac's great. But Shadowheart's also great, and I will hear no more of this Shadowheart slander, okay? She is best girl. She is waifu material. That's that. Hell yes. Hell yes. That's that. All right? <laughs> Hands down. That's that. I'm a Christian. Asterion, though, is a true gift. Like, yeah. Asterion yeah. is a true gift to the world of gaming. I tell you, the gays are eating well this year <laughs> just based <laughs> on Asterion alone. Uh, yeah. he's incredible. He's the biggest bitch in the Sword Coast. Like he is just did did you so acerbic? Uh, did you ascend? Let him ascend? Are you fucking kidding me? I heard it trashes that character. Uh, no, I did not let him ascend. Do you okay. think? Do you think that would have been good for anybody? No, like I, no, I like a, when you jizz your pants because you know a demon is having sex with your form and another and also. He literally sincerely tries to talk you through like, hey, man, this was a thing that happened to you. We should talk about yeah. it. And it's very sincere while everyone else yeah. is like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you have an orgasm in public. He's great. And I mean, like, as much as I love Shadowheart and as much as I love Carlac and as much as I even love Lizelle, um, Asarian Jeez, is man. the first one. Asarian the first one who came up to me like at the party in Act One and was like, hey, and I was like, okay <laughs> like sure and uh he's amazing he's wonderful uh he's my life um and i do not want him to ascend and attain his dreams because then he will leave and forget about us also 
I uh, I let all those vampires go, and I was like, I'm a I'm a good person. And then I told everybody I let the vampires go, and they're like, What have you done? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. Even though she's not like main origin story cast, like I think they did a really good job with Jahira as well. Uh, I was Dude, surprised. Jahira I thought she was going to be kind of like a yeah. Oh, and they're Minsk, so good. Minsk. Oh my god. So Wait, Chris. So with Asteria and your winner? Uh, sure. Wait, can I? Yeah, yeah. Asteria's my winner. Yeah, Asteria's okay. winner. Yeah. Can I just say, like, the running bit from Baldur's Gate 1, 2, and 1 and 2 is that Minsk is like, he's crazy, right? And he talks to this hamster yeah. who he claims is a miniature giant space hamster or whatever. Um, because giant space hamsters are real. The thing is, he talks to it throughout the course of this game, but it's just a real hamster. And he's crazy, even though he talks to it. <laughs> Dude, you, I think I but think this they is a great... But Baldur's Gate 3 is a Larian game where if you've ever played a Larian game, you know the first thing you should do is get animal speaking because the way they write the animals in this game is insane. Oh Some of the God. funniest shit in games is talking to animals. Did you meet that cow? Boo! At the beginning of Act 3? Yeah. the one animal, even when you have animal speaking... He just sounds like a hamster. He he, he doesn't yeah. have a voice because <laughs> yeah. he's just literally he's lying he is, he's because he's hiding. That can talk to this hamster. hamster he's, he's hiding. Like, he's <laughs> lying. I think I think they've made it canon too in like the Forgotten Realms that all hamsters are descended from giant space hamsters. Like a wizard took giant space hamsters and shrunk them down, and we're like, hey, they're little pets. And then that's just where hamsters come from. that's lore i'll accept (laughs) so real quick my my runner-up for best new character of the year is actually going to be chai from hi-fi rush the main playable character he's he is uh just happy-go-lucky he's into music he's just he's just this infectious lovable character um and he he elevates all of his friends around him he's really touching and uh i don't know he's just he's just a phenomenal character i hope to see more of him um and uh but my winner and we've already talked about him once tonight is bode from jedi survivor uh cal's best bud uh best bud bode Best bud I don't think Bode. He stays his bud. Something tells me he's uh... <laughs> no, but like he, for, for, <laughs> well, the, for such a for such a like he's that moment that we described earlier happens like 70, 75 percent of the way through that game. So there's like you get to know him really well and as, as a as a friend for a lot of it, and then you have to spend the second portion of the game dealing with like the fallout of his decision and that decision that we described earlier ultimately leads him to be not only becoming an amazing character, but I think he becomes an amazing villain because he's like very dynamic. Um, his, his motivations are not entirely. Um, he's one of those villains who's doing the wrong things for the right reasons. And um, I tend to find those to be some of the most interesting villains out there. So he's, 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 he's doing the heavy lifting in that game a lot. He's, he is an amazing side character and friend and an amazing villain um uh you know and he, he's not the only villain in that game but he is he is the most memorable one and um it just leads to such it le- honestly his because of that moment that game culminates in like just one of the most beautiful just tragic kind of conclusions to a Star Wars story I fucking loved I fucking loved everything about it I think that story is better because of that character um and honestly I think all the characters in Jedi Survivor are excellent but he definitely stands out as um, as the highlight for me, for sure. Um, you just like him because he's hot. He's so hot, man. He's so fucking hot. He's got a jetpack. Hold, hold me in your strong arms, Bo. Yeah, like you said, man. The gays are eating the well lightsaber. this year because of Bode. <laughs> um, but man, yeah. So, anyways, uh, last minute honorable mentions before we take another break. No, we good. Yes, so many. Oh, okay. but no. The entire cast of Baldur's Gate. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> many. Uh, Sog Anderson from Alan Wake Two, I think, was great hey. as well. Uh, um, uh, 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 the cow from the beginning of Act Three of Baldur's Gate. That's like obviously not a cow, and it's like I'm not a cow, and you're like um, okay, and then he's like, help me get into the city, and I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah, he, like, <laughs> and, he turns himself into an apple, so you can like carry. Yeah, him. and then and I then did that, and I have no idea who he is. Yeah, and I have no idea who he is. He leaves. When I did that, I picked the apple back up. I got my question board. I picked it back up, and I put him back in my inventory. You ate it. 
All right, here's the deal, guys. <laughs> we're going to take a quick break, and during this break, we're going to hear from Ed and Chris Davis' soundtrack of the year. And when we come back, we're going to do Biggest Surprise, Biggest Disappointment, and the Won't Quit You Award. So, Ed, why don't you set up your uh, soundtrack, and then Chris Davis, you can do yours. Great, yeah. So, um, as I've kind of hinted at uh, for this award show, I am a big fan of Xenoblade. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed had a new uh, overworld, kind of overworld theme. All of them, they all slap. Every single uh, game, the like big like area overworld theme always does. Um, there's a couple of other like kind of hints. I listened to a video that like went through this song and talked about the hints at other uh games and stuff like that, which is beautiful. Um, but it's for uh the big overworld theme, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, but it, it's Gwar Planes it's awesome. 4. It, yeah, it's not Gar Planes, but uh, anyway, cool. that. That is me. It is for uh, the Scent Omnia region uh, when you first uh, go up the elevator into the big open world. Sweet. All right, Chris Davis. And mine is, uh, as you've heard me say multiple times tonight, uh, from Sea of Stars. Uh, it has a dynamic soundtrack um, in, based on the time of day in which you are, choose to explore a map. Uh, so mm. there is a day version and a night version of pretty much every single music track in the game. And mine is from one of the very early levels, the mountain trail. Uh, this is the night version. Cool. Uh, also, that soundtrack is massive. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, it's like three. It's like three CDs worth of, worth of music. It, it's um, like CDs, 120 tracks. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a big one. It's a big one. All right, uh, so uh, enjoy these tracks from Ed and Chris Davis' soundtracks. When we come back, we'll uh, do a few more awards and wrap it up. So uh, don't go anywhere. All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, we are through... We have, we have five categories left. So we're going to do Biggest Surprise, Biggest Disappointment, and Won't Quit You, I Promise Award. And I think we've decided for these last five awards, um, we're going to just do a single winner. We're not going to do any runner-ups. Um, which makes sense. I think a lot of the stuff we've gotten past, gotten through at this point has been kind of the long-winded stuff and the more like delving into the details. So uh, these are going to be kind of, uh, you know, looking back at the year as a whole here. Let's let's talk about our biggest surprise. Brad, why don't you start us off? Biggest surprise of the year. My biggest surprise of the year. We're not doing the runner-up, but I think Ed's making us do an honorable mention title later, which is yes, fine. Yes, Ed's making us. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> Um, my winner for biggest surprise of the year is a series that I've always kind of liked but not loved, and this is the first one I really loved actually. Yeah, I, I think maybe I'll be surprised how high this is up on my list when you do see my top ten videos later. Skim through it later this year uh, month. Um, Pikmin four statements. Pikmin oh. four is one of like the most pleasurable like vibey games like it's weird that the series has gone from like one that was like pretty hardcore and like the the controls were fiddly and it was stressful and like ah you know with pikmin one and now pretty we're niche. pikmin four and everything is like just like fucking like smooth and vibey ochi is you know shout out maybe runner honorable wish for character of the year makes pikmin such a pleasurable thing and it's such a smart addition of like dude instead of like directing this and throwing guys here and collecting all your guys like constantly but you're still doing it's like just hit a button everybody jumps on ochi and you're just fucking cruising and like part of the way through that game you get an upgrade for ochi that just makes it move so much faster too and you are just ochi's a little dog right yeah he's, dog. he's the yeah. he's the alien dog that all your pikmin you know all 100 pikmin and you could just hop on you know you could just you know charge up a charge attack ram it to the enemy and all your pikmin all hundred pikmin will just jump onto the enemy and just start beating the shit out of it and it, it, yeah. it's such a smart thing they've made so many like cool smart choices to make um pikmin like a a different kind of experience and that experience the one that it is now is one that i love because it is very chill because it is very vibey and i was not expecting that you know i honestly tried pikmin um, I, I committed to playing Pikmin early on because I knew a lot of y'all wouldn't. And I was like, well, I feel like someone should give Pikmin some lip service because I've liked those games in the past. And I was surprised by just how like much more addictive it is now. It's an enormous game. There's so much to do in that game. And, and it, 
including an entire like Olimar, like Pikmin one, like you can play that game without a lot of the, without Ochi and a lot of like the um, quality uh, of life stuff quality of life stuff they introduced in this game and just kind of play it like pikmin one with like a really tight time limit and that and it's just a thing you can do it's just in the game and it's super cool you know 15 days to get all the parts of your uh you know your rocket ship it's just it's it's cool i love it pikmin 4 highly recommend it you know i mash through the dialogue i skip it i, I feel like that trips people up you obviously as you don't play the game for story in the tutorial skip through them. just play the game it's so zen i love it pikmin Nice. Uh, Chris Davis. Okay. Uh, just to, to qualify this question, uh, can surprise be the existence of a video game? Whatever you want. It's whatever oh, you want, man. Dude, it doesn't matter. Dude. It can be whatever you want if you say it right now. Okay. And well, as long was... as it's not fantasy critic related. No, no, it's not. Uh, uh-huh. it, okay. okay. I, 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 I'm going to, I'm not going to steal Nick's thunder. Uh, I just, nice. I'm just going to go you with, uh, maybe you will. No, Hi- Hi-Fi Rush existing oh, as yeah. a product. Just like that game came out of fucking nowhere. What a great fucking shadow drop. What a, what a tremendous game that nobody n- expected that. Especially nobody would have expected it. From the Tango Gameworks, like the evil within people made this, this colorful, cheery, fun rhythm action game emphasis on rhythm like where the fuck did they come up with that idea how did they fucking execute it so well like yeah. excellent game yeah no, that's a fantastic delightful choice. surprise all right uh ed yeah so mine's mine's a little bit out of left field um but considering how often i play wordle i <laughs> am going to put connections as my biggest surprise um, I don't think I've even heard of this. It is you can play it's it on New York Times games games app. Um, you start with getting sixteen words, and you are tasked with putting them in four categories. For the four, four of the words go in four categories each, um, and they trick you up. Uh, they give you like ones. They give you like five words that might be in one of the categories, but you have to like determine what another category is in order to. Um, in order to like disqualify that from the four, uh, so I uh, give it a try. Um, it's on New York Times Games app. Uh, I play it every day, and um, considering how much I fell off a of world, this actually got me back on world because they're right next to each other in the games app. Um, so I'm playing world <laughs> again. And what's your starting uh, word? What's your starting word? Uh, outer. Um, outer. And sometimes I put wild as my second, just because I'm a nerd. Damn! Look at the nerd game is strong with this one. Has it ever so, been? Yeah. Con- connections. Cool. Uh, Nolan, do you have one for this category? All right. Why are you yeah, skipping? Uh, I'm I'm going in the order. I usually skip over Nolan because I'm not. Oh. He, he doesn't have things. I'm going okay. in the order I have on my screen. Uh, you go yeah, before uh, me. I have uh, an honorable mention because I skipped like five other categories. So y'all can let me talk for a little lot longer. <laughs> uh, my honorable mention uh, is going to go to uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a good one. That is not a game I saw myself playing. It is not a game I thought I would be into. Uh, but on a one-off uh, one evening, uh, we did a game night with it. Good. Really liked good it. Time. And then I, I played a whole lot more um you know some with the community some on my own uh but i had you know a whole lot of fun uh playing that game uh some pretty unique mechanics what's up brad surprisingly no, beautiful never, game too never <laughs> forget those enough. those uh epic moments you have with scotch <laughs> we, um, he calls himself scotch now sometimes too so it's cool <laughs> um but yeah um a whole lot of fun uh playing Tyson Chan- chancellor oh, i know your winner's uh, gonna be do you? I think. Go ahead. Just go Are ahead. Are you sure? I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is, but go ahead. So my my biggest surprise uh, is a similar multiplayer game yeah. uh, that came out of left field uh, for honestly all of the internet. Uh, but it's going to be Lethal Company. There, I knew um, it. Mm. It it like the funny nice. thing was is you know we did that game night where we played it and we had so much fun. And then like literally like two days later, I'm seeing it like everywhere on the internet. Uh, it just that game blew up like crazy. Watched the series clips from that game. 
Yeah, oh, other yeah, people there's been it. some Tons amazing of TikToks highlights and stuff like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, and so, you know, I played a bunch, uh, with some community members, uh, some on, you know, and it's just that, that is a extremely fun game, but like I said, out of left field, didn't even know, like, you know, like to Chris Davis's point, it's not that it's just, I'm surprised I enjoyed it. I, it came out of nowhere, uh, you know, and never heard of it until it was like, Hey, here's a $10 game. Uh, that's a uh, kind of fun. And yeah. I'm down to do more of that soon. Cause that's fun. Also, Me too, for shout, sure. out to pl- shout out to playing that game with crispy and his diabolical laugh. It's. <laughs> Give Crispy a walkie-talkie, and it's endless fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so, some some of the, my favorite moments, you know, we we kind of talked about it earlier, and like you know, video game moments of the year are from that game. Uh, you know, just you know, uh, Nick and I, you know, being the only ones alive and getting back to the ship, and like, how come Crispy's not talking to us? And it's because there's a fucking one of those dog things that just immediately attacks us. Oh, or like I said, when I got struck by lightning. Mulligan struck uh, by lightning. <laughs> <laughs> no one getting struck just, by lightning is one of the funniest let's things. Fucking I've ever go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. If I, if I ever get around times. to getting all these clips that I want to put back up on YouTube, uh, I have a bunch of Lethal Company stuff that I want to get up there. Um, nice. All right, Crispy, it is now your turn. All right, we're doing surprise. Yep. Uh, my biggest surprise of 2023 is Armored Core Six. Fires a Rubicon. I like. I'm so glad that the game was better than I thought it would be. Like I was kind of ready for it to be good. I picked it up in uh, in Fantasy Critic because I was like, "This is it. This is the year. They're gonna do it. It's gonna be fun." And they did it, and it was very fun. And I can finally reconcile the fact that like I've played a good mech game. You know, I love the mechs so much. <laughs> I, I, I love mechs so much. And like, it's really hard finding good mech games. And like, I've always wanted to be into Armored Core, but I just haven't been like never clicked with one. And then this one came along and it just felt like fucking poetry. It felt like bread and butter. You know, it felt like nice. felt like a like a like a warm hot tub on a cool winter's night. It was. Oof. I felt cleansed. I felt uh, ascended, redeemed. So good. Love Armored Core 6. Very nice. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, my biggest surprise, uh, I don't know if this is what you were thinking about, Chris Davis, but uh, without question, my biggest surprise of the year was Cyberpunk 2077 2.0 update uh, and Phantom Liberty, uh, but like mainly uh, the 2.0 update, which basically reinvented the game. Uh turned it into something completely different into something wildly addicting and um, just immensely entertaining. And um, I'm so glad I finally went back into, went back to it and gave it a, a shake because I think now it is among it's, it's up there with some of my favorite open world games um, that I've ever played. You know, it's up there with days gone and red dead redemption. And, you know, it's just, it's an incredible experience and it, it it's an inc- I would have mentioned it during storytelling, honestly, if it wasn't technically, you know, there's nothing new storytelling wise that they're doing in 2023. Uh, the storytelling is the same approach they had with the original release, but um, just the way they reinvented the game. And it's I, honestly now it, it ranks among the best redemption stories in the industry uh it's up there with no man's sky and how that game completely turned itself around and and reinvented itself and it kind of redeemed cd project red in my eyes and made me reminded me that i do love this studio and that they did fuck up big time with that initial launch and i'm hoping they learned some important lessons um and we don't see a repeat of that with the witcher 4 and the next cyberpunk game which we know they're also working on um because i am now officially i went from not giving a shit about cyberpunk to watching edge runners and then d- jumping into this game for over 100 hours and now i couldn't be more excited to see more from this universe yeah. um, and that's just not something that was on my bingo card for 2023 so. You're just an Edge Runners fan. That's all that is. That anime was so good. You're like, oh fuck. It was I, really I, good. I, I when I it's so good. <laughs> when I started hearing the positive vibes or the positive reviews and whatnot about the 2.0 update, I was like, okay, this is it. I'm gonna play it. Um, and I was like, and I started asking people, when in the experience should I dr- watch Edge Runners? Everyone's like, watch it before you play the game. It takes it, you know that's the perfect place yeah, yeah. to start. I was like, oh, perfect. So that's my starting point. So that's where I started, jumped in, 
one of my favorite experiences of the entire year. Um, so yeah, easy, easy surprise uh, for me. All right. Thanks. Biggest yeah. disappointment. Flip side of that category. Here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Final Fantasy 16. Final Fantasy 16. I fucking hate that That's... game. Well, you know, look, <laughs> I, I was wanting it to be a thing that it is not. You know, I've always wanted to play and love Final Fantasy 14. Trust me, I believe the hype. I also knew that that team was, um, you know, big fans of Matsuno. You know, I love Matsuno. Uh, yep. More than almost anything in games, right? I love Final Fantasy Tactics. And, and the demo certainly. Tactics Ogre, Vagrant Story. Like, like I thought, and, and people told me that, like, dude, like, Yoshi P, he's a Matsuno super fan. This is going to be every, and a lot of that stuff was in Final Fantasy fourteen, and this was going to be the single player Final Fantasy fourteen. You know, the, the people who can't stand MMOs, the best of those games, the story is going to come to this game. And and you're everyone's gonna be happy, and we're all gonna dance around the greatest RPG of all time now. Um, and you know what? I didn't even finish it. I fucking hate that game. I don't hate it. Look, I'm just <laughs> mad at. It. I'm really fucking it's mad like at. It. It's not even close to what I played. wanted. It's not even close to what I want from a Matsuno game. It's not even close to what I want from Game of Thrones, whatever the fuck they called that early on. Um, it's just not, you know, it's big and bombastic and like, you know, those boss battles are cool to look at, you know, but yeah, it is really just bombast. I don't even like playing those moments. I kind of just want to watch someone else play Final Fantasy 16 in front of me. Um, <laughs> I just wanted so much more and so much different and it's not that, and it made me really sad and Final Fantasy has been a kind of a bummer for me for a long time and everyone not just me, everyone thought that this was going to be a return to form, and maybe some people think it is, but for me, it sure as fucking wasn't. Uh, there are times where I think that I like Final Fantasy 15 more than 16. Dang. Wow. That's a statement. So yeah, I'll go ahead and say this is my winner as well, so I'll just chime in here. Um, I echo most of what Brad said, uh, especially yeah. about wanting to play this in lieu of 14, because I wanted a single-player game that felt like 14. Uh, I also think that demo was incredibly strong. Um, it was. And I don't even know where the drop-off happened, but at some point it just kind of became... Uh, right, right after the demo end, ended? No, <laughs> I don't think it was right after the demo ended, but like, you know, 10, 15 hours into that game, it starts to go a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, if you know what I mean. And <laughs> yeah. And then it just never lets off the gas. Um, and I don't think I, oh. and I, I, I think that could be used in a positive way. I'm not trying to use it in a positive way here. Um, but also to Ed's point, so he's as he's echoed throughout the show, I th or I, you know, I think it has great music. I think it has some great characters. I think it has beautiful visuals. I think it's a technical masterpiece. I, you know, there's a lot of stuff I like about this game. And ultimately it just ended up i was like this is like one of the worst good games i've ever played <laughs> i don't i don't even know how else but I, I think the combat got too repetitive i don't know what it was but um and i still feel like they haven't managed to do like summons right in a final fantasy game since like final fantasy 10? How, maybe 10 10 10, 10 um, right. or 12 10 maybe i mean tw i think i was like teetering on 12 wasn't even yeah. my favorite either but like yeah, you know, at least at least twelve. But I, I would even go back, far back as ten. Um, so, you know, it, I I I'm I'm inc I have become an incredibly skeptical person of Final Fantasy, and it used to be one of my favorite franchises of all time. So, Seven remakes, sick as hell, and I can't wait for this new one. But you yeah, know, no. but also <laughs> you would have told me that that that'd be the one that I was hanging on to at the have, end of 2023 i'm really hoping seven I, i'm really hoping rebirth kind of revitalizes it's me a little fucking bit fucking shallow ass game you know you know what matsuno yeah. is not just a brilliant storyteller and creates these awesome worlds and these awesome like fucking political intrigue it's fucking game of thrones right but like those are also like incredibly like deep complex games with like really like interesting weird systems that you don't see in any games that you, that you can go fucking down the rabbit hole on like the depth of like the systems in matsuno games i mean y'all tried to play vagrant story coward but this <laughs> is like shallow bullshit with like bad itemization and and sh you know what i'm done i'm done i'm done yep all right let's pass it over to chris davis what's your biggest disappointment okay just five seconds uh runner up every, every, is oh. starfield 
Uh, there is there are elements of Chris Bethesda Davis. goodness in Starfield. It's. I mean, hold on, Chris Davis. Wait one second. One second. No, we aren't we, doing we can talk about Starfield. We can talk about Starfield because that's my winner. Oh, okay. Okay. Like I was saying, do your the, winner. The... Oh, wait. sorry. Do your winner. Okay, my winner. This is. You got to give me preface for this, okay? Oh God! Every my, time. My. My biggest disappointment for 2023 was how the storytelling was done in Tears of the Kingdom. I think that was not the story that should have been necessarily told in that manner. Um, Zelda had the, the, the depiction of the character of Zelda was an excellent setup in Breath of the Wild. Uh, and then they basically do fuck all with her again in Tears of the Kingdom, which they absolutely should have not done at all. Um, and also, Zelda games have been really good about setting up players for power fantasy, and player empowerment, building you up as a character. This should have been a game because the whole premise of the beginning was that the Master Sword has been shattered, is broken. Uh, the entire loop of the game should have been about rebuilding the master sword becoming more powerful becoming a better hero than you were at the end of breath of the wild um that's not what this game was so this is a personal gripe otherwise i love tears of the kingdom just i don't agree how that story should have been told man i think zelda's whole thing about becoming spoiler alert the dragon Hmm. was Ah. I'm with Chris Davis. Um, I wish I wish there was a lot more voice acting. Honestly, fucking Nintendo. Okay. Game, game uh, for kids, man. Ed, what's your biggest disappointment? Uh, yeah. So, um, this is just a quick one, but the Steam Deck's performance for Jedi Fallen Order, uh, mm. was a disappointment for me. Uh, especially on Kashyyyk, you get there and the Steam Deck just crashes. Basically, it just dies. Oh, like it, it goes down to one one FPS and you can't in do anything Fallen about Order it. Or in, in Fallen Order, yes. Oh, okay. Um. So it basically killed killed the my that game for me because I didn't have my PC for for a long period of stretch of time. So I wasn't able to play Survivor and all that stuff. So that was disappointing. But my real disappointment, my biggest disappointment of this year, Fire Emblem Engage. God oh, damn! I was gonna put that, that in surprises for making me that care about Fire Emblem game. Combat again. So yes, it's a it has a, it does great at all those things. What turned me off from that game, and I mean, like, I played one chapter after this happened, is you lose all your rings. The whole point of the fucking game is that you get these rings that allow you to summon characters, and you get to uh, level up and sw- and switch them out with different characters and get uh, different skills and-, and learn different skills. You lose all of them that you get at, like, chapter 10, and you get them back two at a time, or maybe one or two at a time, as you go through the next chapters. And so I'm spending a good third of the game like not leveling the things that I want to level because all my rings are gone uh. and it pissed me off so bad and I was playing on hard I was like I want to play this game on hard because I like playing Fire Emblem games on hard I was playing it's on hard, hard and it's good and, and it's I and I and I took it is and but like to have to spend a third of the game not leveling my characters in the way that I want to so that I can do better on hard just completely turned me off from that game. I've had that game in my in my Switch, the physical version in my Switch, the entire year, because I played Tears of the Kingdom digital. I had it in the my in there my the entire year, and I did not boot it up once. Oh after, no! Like, and it gets really good. After, I mean, I know, it, I know it gets it, good. It, it, I know, but you can't do this to me. You can't get break into ring the whole thing. whole system of the game to me. You can't do it. It doesn't work. Sounds like a it, perfect disappointment. It, 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 it turns me off from the game. No. Same thing happened. I mean, at, le- at least it's like an interesting disappointment and not like the I wanted three houses again. Like a lot of people no. said, even though this no, is like a, the best great combat game. Fire Emblem's ever had. It's a yeah. great game. It just, it just pissed me off. That's all that, that is. Happened. That is a shocking rug pull. Let me tell you, especially the fight after that, which is like super fucking bullshit. I like, know. Yeah. And you're spending all this experience. You're not getting anything of the ones you wanted. God, it's so annoying. Like, why would they do that? For story reasons. Bullshit. All okay. right. No one cares about the story in that game. No. All right, Nolan. Uh, all right. So as I mentioned, you know, a couple minutes ago, uh, my biggest disappointment of 2023 is Starfield. Um, I don't think I'm the only one. 
Uh, I think everyone was pretty hyped for that. I think we've been hyped for it for years. Um, you know, Fallout and Space, uh, that first, you know, trailer they showed us uh, last year, I think is when they showed it. The deep dive? Uh, with the yeah, well, no, wasn't that, I think before the deep dive, I was like, I can't remember which one it was, but it was the first one where we saw a little bit of like the going to space and a little bit of the ship and all that stuff. Mm. Um, got everyone super, super hyped, and then they did the deep dive. And honestly, I think we even got more. Hyped. They talked about building of ships. They talked about you know they talked it up oh so much. God. And dude, that game just fell flat so fucking hard. Dude, I like it. I, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I just remember. I'm no. This I'm sorry. I'm just. This is my this is my number one disappointment of the year too. Um, surprised. that deep dive being like where everyone was like, I don't know, this kind of looks like No Man's Sky but ugly, and then everyone else was like, No, okay, calm down because this is gonna be No Man's Sky but with a Bethesda RPG put on top of it, and that Bethesda RPG they put on top of it was absolute dog water absolutely oh everything about it was bad nick i don't Man. know how you make a party of characters you have like eight twelve different characters around you who are like your people and like n they all suck like none of them are interesting or have anything to say in their worldview or their personality beyond like, man, space is cool, isn't it? Like, it's kind of cool that we go into space. I feel like somebody took everything that Bethesda has been known for doing well and then just like threw that away. Oh, was man. like, no, uh, no, dude, I don't like I don't understand how they have that many different like moon maps in the game where you have to walk for like half an hour to get anywhere to like see anything. And they exactly. were like, this is like what we do. This is this is what we do. Well, like we definitely learned what a good game is from Skyrim, like where you literally were like placed into this like countryside that had things to explore and things to find in every direction. You just pick a Pick a direction, so, go, so, and then you would find incredible, Chris, interesting you, things. I, this is why I didn't want to start I, because now I'm on a roll and I can't stop. Um, and that's I, mean. hold on, I, I can stop you real quick because I want to. <laughs> I want to echo a little more what you're saying there. And yes, that was one of my biggest problems with the game is the fact that everything it just seemed like points on a map. First off, a map that I couldn't fucking read. Um, and it, it just there was this uh, the vastness of nothing, which is like that's what space is. Yeah, it is. But also no, this that, is a fucking that video is game. A, like, it, like, like, like that, that, I, I, I do not accept that. I do not accept that designers were sitting there working on that game, were like playing those maps, were were like doing quests on moons, and were going, this is great. Like, people will love this. I don't accept yeah. that. Like, somebody was like, this needs to be in space. We need to have a lot of planets because people like planets and people like flying to those planets. But we also don't want to make things too difficult, so we'll put in a fast travel system. Like, I don't accept that anybody, like, had a vision for this game. This was a giant list of, like, wouldn't it be cool? And they shoved it all together, and it was dog shit like it's so bad it's so bad nick i'm I, sorry like you're just gonna have to not pay attention to me right now because i fucking hate this game like i put i put 30 hours into it the only joy i ever got out of it was ship building and even that was like i'd spend two hours building a ship and then i'd go okay let's go do a mission let me open my galaxy map pick the planet i want to fly to and like oh yeah. there's my ship for a second oh okay and then i'm on the planet i want to be at like so, that's, that's so, just so, like so, insane to me. That's insane to me that you took this game and. Uh, so and let, let me uh, fast uh, travel jump in between real quick. planets. I, so I, bad. I would say that I, my opinions are often kind of in between Nick and Crispy. Uh, oftentimes, I think oftentimes when Nick will love a game, Crispy will hate it. And then I'm kind of in the middle. And I think it's kind of that way this here. But I'm leaning more towards Crispy. And because Nick, I, I will say. I wanted so much to love this game. Um, Fallout you don't Three have to is one of my favorite. Me. I'm, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Here, so. I just, I just know you enjoyed it, and th there's nothing wrong with you enjoying it. I'm glad you had a good time with it. 
I, I yeah. wanted to love it because, like Crispy said, so Fallout 3 was one of my favorite games of all time. I love Skyrim. Skyrim was great. And to Crispy's point, if you start walking in any direction in that game, something happens. No matter what. You can't go more than a few minutes without encountering something. Versus Starfield, where you could go for hours and have nothing happen. Uh, or maybe yeah. you find like a random little shack, but it just like it just felt boring for the wrong reasons. And I think Somebody... I agree with what Crispy was saying in that I don't think they had an actual vision when they started this game. I think they had, hey, we want it to be in space. Uh, maybe I don't know if they had shipbuilding early on, um, but uh, end of list. We want it, it in space. Somebody like, read it, the like expanse just... and was like, "Oh, we could do this," and they mm-hmm. couldn't. Um, I like it, it, that's the other thing too is like I think about I think about the IPs that must have been like big influences on this game, like the expanse and like Star Trek, where they've taken the most superficial aspects of that. It's like, oh, Star Trek, everyone's. You know, it's utopian and people are into space and exploration and science. Okay, but like you, you've just taken that. You've taken all the aspects of Star Trek that don't generate conflict. So that's why your story is not interesting because there's not really a conflict. Like you've taken the visual cues and like kind of the world building of the expanse, but you didn't take the aspects of it to generate fucking conflict you just took the industrial looking solar system nasa punk spaceship and then we're like that's pretty good like you like i don't know man i just i can't with that fucking game like todd you will never trick me again i am so fucking pissed off knowing in my head that i'm gonna buy the next elder scrolls game day one and play it because this like is like i don't know man i don't know that i will i, I like i don't i don't understand how a uh, company would make this game and then turn around and put out the best elder scrolls game that's ever existed you know what i'm saying like i just don't see it happening i don't know you don't game pass <laughs> yeah I, 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 like, that's the thing is like the only reason i played as much as i did is because it was on game pass and even then it's like i shouldn't be this angry because i didn't lose anything on the experience except my time and my time's worth your, time, your time <laughs> yeah no you crispy your time is valuable <laughs> like, and that's one of the things that i kind of like, to, like bring up i wanted is, it is, to be good i wanted i wanted brad to be right i wanted everybody who was telling me like this is going to be so much more than no man's sky because there's going to be that bethesda magic in it to be right and like it, we lost we no lost guys it's gonna be so much more than no man's sky you yeah it's just you use those words it's gonna be different you use those words <laughs> we no. move on i mean, so, I mean the, so, the... Real, real quick real quick i wanted to just talk talk about you know we've talked about some generic kind of like concepts for the game but like in regards to like more mechanic based stuff i had a lot of issues with the game and you know like i said bethesda games have always been some of my favorite i do have a particular play style that i've basically done in every uh you know fallout or uh you know uh skyrim you know morrowind oblivion whatever um uh elder scrolls uh game uh, i like playing stealthy characters i enjoy uh you know pumping that up to the point where i'm basically invisible i have very vivid memories um in oblivion of being you know so stealthy that someone's after me and i crouch and back up into a shadow and they're just like where do you okay and they 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 fucking lose me or you know doing you know using camouflage gear in fallout uh and like fucking with you know enemies and then not knowing what's going on early in uh starfield i got like a camo suit and it's like, oh, like, makes you invisible, blah, 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 blah. And I put it on, and I do something, and someone's like, stop that, and they start shooting me. And I'm like, what the fuck? What was the point of having a fucking camo suit if they can just see everything you're doing? It's not like I was, like, touching them. I was, like, across the room. Yeah. Uh, and that, there's, like, a, a huge frustration that, like, maybe there's some meter somewhere, that, but it's not, like, visible to me. Like, I don't understand what... And, and it was just you one know, of those things where, like... Oh, you know ahead. what it is. The The... The the crux of all of this, and it's I hate to say it, and some people might not agree with me, but Bethesda is a fashion and lifestyle brand that happens to make video games. They make video games to supply the merch side of their business. Like, and that's all it is. That's why anything in that game looks the way it does, is because if you sold merch that looked like that, it would be cool and people would buy it. Like that's it. That's what Bethesda is before Fallout. They, they did they make games before Fallout. before Fallout. They definitely weren't that even five years ago, but they are now. 
Okay. Like <laughs> that is a thesis for a video essay for that, a three hour <laughs> video essay I would watch on YouTube. I'm going to, I'm getting to work on it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <Nick. I'm... laughs> or who's next? That was it. Nick. No, oh. mine was, mine was final fantasy. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, nice. it won't quit you. I promise. Oh, <laughs> We won't quit you, Nick. Oh, oh man. Uh, Let's just wrap this up. <laughs> All right. Well, right. Real quick. Thesis behind this is I, I feel like at least I do it sometimes. I always tell myself I'm not going to do it. Kind of roll over to the new year. New games start coming out. Games I've, I have I really enjoyed from the previous year. I just find myself putting down to like play the new things, even though why? Why am I putting this down? So that's kind of what this award is for. Uh, it's, it's actually I'm going to give it to a game that I started playing in the past week or so. And I'm going to keep playing it a week and a half, maybe. I don't know, um, because it's really good. It's called Cobalt Corp, and it's Slay the Spire meets FTL with like a yeah. really cool like aesthetic. That oh, is, that one. It, it's it's a different kind of vibe than obviously like an FT, FTL, which is very like cool and spacey. But uh, and this is more like cute and pastel not cute, but like I'm also finding like the characters incredibly endearing. They're cu- stuck in a loop and they know they're in a loop. It's a roguelike. Um, and you know, one character really wants a gun and now I'm in a loop where they finally gave him a gun, <laughs> even though they really didn't want to give him a gun. But anyways, it's, it's like fucking FTL meet, meets Slay the Spire. It's a deck builder and it's fucking FTL and it's cool and it looks good and it's just fun as shit to play. And you know what? It's 2024. I'm going to keep playing it. Cobalt core. Look it up. It's cool. Real All cool. right. Chris Davis. Uh, I mean, just real quick. Uh, it's something I want to get to before, uh, the year rolled over, but I'm not going to be able to get to it before game of the year stuff is done. Uh, playing uh, the new game plus the final draft of Alan Wake 2. Um, they had hinted that there is uh, extra scenes, uh, extra characters that pop up, uh, and a new ending that you get for beating new game plus. And for a game well. like Alan Wake 2, that is very intriguing to me. So... And they're calling it the final draft. Oh, because he's an author. Yes. <laughs> you got it, Crispy. You nailed it. Uh, I'm so also going to do that Crispy. at some point. Um, all right, Ed. So when I wrote down this award, it was Won't Quit You Award. And I originally had Baldur's Gate 3 in here, obviously. But then, it, but then Nick one. added the I promise. And so I'm not going to break my promise. Uh, and so instead... <laughs> Hey, I will put in uh, Jedi uh, Jedi Survivor as my yeah. uh, as my game. I'm 100 percent gonna play and finish in 2024. Um, as I said before, like the the Steam Deck performance of Jedi Fallen Order is what turned me off from the game. Uh, but now that I'm at home and I have a PC and stuff like that, and I can stream you it, I already and, spoiled yeah. it for you, Ed. So I, what's the I point? know, right? <laughs> Sorry, bud. I mean, it's yeah, okay. like. I gave the biggest let me, sports warning. Let me, tell you, let me tell you something. First of all, the narrative is well executed. Okay? <laughs> You'll be fine. The narrative is well executed. Spoilers are not everything. Do yourself a favor and break yourself that mindset. Also, that's that's Crispy's. That's I'm Crispy's. Uh... I'm confused. I mean, that, that's my. That is my advice to everybody in general consuming media. Is that like that's spoilers are not. On. That is not spoilers. It's nice when something crazy happens and it surprises you. That is not the end all be all of like the measure of quality of a product or your enjoyment of the product. Trust me. Just trust me. Agreed. Like, also, I, I like trust it. you now. <laughs> all right, Spoiler no one. Everything. Um, yeah, so uh, my uh, I won't quit you. I promise uh, for 2023 um, is actually going to be Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, um, never finished the game, uh, not because I didn't enjoy it. it really? It's just mainly because it came out literally as I was starting my move. Um, I played a huge chunk of the game on handheld because I didn't even have a TV. Uh, for a while and i fucking loved every minute of it for sure um but then you know actual moving process happened unpacking all that stuff uh and mm-hmm. i think a couple other things came out and it fell off uh don't get me wrong loved every minute of the game i played um and i but i just i didn't i haven't picked it back up uh, i don't remember the last date i played it but it's been several several months 
Um, but I am going to get back to it for sure. Um, definitely before this year is over, uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to finish that game just because I did love it so much. What I did play of it. Wait, crispy. Uh, mine's also tears of the kingdom. That's not surprising to anybody. I don't finish video games. We've been doing this together for almost 14 years now. You guys know this about me. What I am going to say is I'm going to talk about something completely different for a second. Nick, I want to talk about the differences in our opinions on Starfield for a second. Oh my god, And no. I just want you to know, I just want you to know <laughs> that I know it's frustrating to you, and I want you to understand that it's not like, it's not like a objective reality sort of thing of like, what, like, why do these people feel this way and I feel that way? Like, no, that's... Okay. I know, I know. I don't want you to be frustrated about it. I want you to understand that my opinion is entirely a philosophical one. Where that's where that's regarded, and it's as much about, about as well. it's as much about Bethesda as it is the game itself. I'm glad you it, enjoyed it. I played 30 hours of it. I played way more of that game than I did Final Fantasy 16. Like there was something there it, for me, but hey, Chris, I, I think Nick was frustrated with how long you guys were talking about it. it not, no, no, <laughs> I no, was, he was frustrated. I was definitely about frustrated content. because I like the game a lot. It's yeah. a mix of both, and it, and it's it, it, it's like a branch. It's a complete first off, philosophical. First off, n- neither of us were trying to yuck your yum. Neither of us I were know. upset with you because you liked it. I've been doing I'm this for glad a long time, you enjoyed your time with it. Anyway, I, but you just promise, it neither just, like Chris B was saying, n- none of it was malice towards was, you. If if you enjoyed it, I'm happy you enjoyed it. I'm upset that I didn't enjoy it more. I, I don't even necessarily it. hate it as a game in a vacuum. Okay, huh, yeah, because of space. Um. I hate it as a game in a larger context. That's it. That's all. Look, look, That's my frustration I... mostly stems from the fact that I know this is not the time or the place for me to enter into a debate about it because that's not what we're here to do. Well, I, yeah, to I guess. My tongue we're not... while, we, while you talk about something that I completely disagree with, sucks. That's all it, I'm frustrated It with. does suck, but I, you know, let, let us talk about it. This is our video game. Of course game I'm going to let you talk about it. Did I not let, let you I, talk No, about I'm it? saying let us, let you and me talk about it, Nick. Like, this is our video game podcast, right? I know. It's cool. It's just... I know you, I know you disagree. Like, like when I say things like, I don't find the characters of the story interesting, you're like, well, that's just wrong. And yeah, okay. I mean, I, I get mean, it. That's not that's really cool. what I was saying about that either. No, I yeah, know, I but I know you disagree, disagree you that with that point. opinion, right? Like, you do like the story and you do like the characters. I like the story. I don't like the characters so much. I mean, like, I was like, I care about my character. Sure. But whatever. See, this is the thing. We're getting into, like, I don't really want to. Okay. I we just, still got I awards just, to do tonight, so I would I, love I, to have a conversation with you. Just I'm not, not talking to you as a fellow podcaster, Nick. I'm talking to you as a friend. I know. Okay? I know you are. I'm just In that case, let's your talk about Wolverine. Wolverine. Your sucks. <laughs> so, anyways. I know. Um, what, are we, what category are we on? Oh, yeah. my. I mean, mine's obvious. I'm not going to... Baldur's Gate 3. I'm... I'm really far <laughs> into Baldur's Gate 3, and I adore that game. I love, I love that game with every fiber of my being, and I'm going to continue playing it. I'm going to finish it in 2024. I wish I could have finished it last year, but um, nope, I chose to finish a bunch of other games period. instead. Um, yeah. What? Oh, no, what it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great pick for this category. Also. I know. It's just every time I talk about my mindset with Baldur's Gate 3, you seem to get really fucking fidgety. <laughs> So like, calm down. No, I mean I've gone into many words about why I disagree with. Yeah. Your I thought you were supposed to finish we, it the we, last week of the year, that. Nick. No, I, no I, played, I played. I played a bunch of it during my last week of the year. I never said I was going to finish true. it. I, I I saw you playing, and I okay. and I giggled at myself every time you did because I was like, I'm not playing this game. <laughs> you know, I also I also spent yesterday playing a bunch of Starfield. So okay, you're making it worse. Um, what's the next category? You need to stop having that fucking reaction, is what I'm fucking saying. God. Oh, that's I want to die reason. right now. Okay. Oh my god. And now I gotta set up my fucking soundtrack of the year. Okay. <laughs> this is our last fucking break for the night. I want to die. Brad, set up your soundtrack before. This is... Oh, yo. Oh, gonna... Easily <laughs> best soundtrack of the year and better than whatever Nick's about to say. Mine is. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. It's so good. That Jet Set Radio spiritual successor nailed nice. it, especially on the soundtrack. Uh, listen to this. What's the... <laughs> and listen. And you know listen that new sound from... you've been looking for? You know that new sound you've been looking for? <laughs> well, from listen. The Dreamcast era. Listen to this. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Okay, and then oh, fucking god, fuck me dead. And my soundtrack of the year. I'm gonna be honest, guys. It came down to two options for me, and they're both gonna get me canceled. Um, so I went with one of them. Uh, my take both uh, of them. Take both of them. <laughs> I mean, I was gonna go with Atomic Heart because that soundtrack is wildly unexpected and bombastic and just yeah, but... fucking heavy and whimsical at the same time. It's crazy, but. Um, yeah, canceled, but I decided. I decided to go with. Your other choice is less controversial. <laughs> uh, no, it's still pretty controversial, um, obviously. But you know, but the but the sanctions, Nick. But the sanctions. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my uh, my soundtrack. I'll go with Hogwarts Legacy. I you know I was gonna mention Hogwarts Legacy as a runner up during my biggest disappointment because that went from my most anticipated game of forever to being a game that um i don't even know is gonna you know make it into my like honorable mentions i mean i played like 70 hours I mean, of it it, and it, I won't. it, it was but... a bad game no here oh don't do this to God. <laughs> fuck off nolan here's the thing i played 70 hours music. of that game and i don't regret a minute of it i love i love that game because i love harry potter and there's a lot of things that that game did right but it's also incredibly flawed um, especially the music but the soundtrack, <laughs> the soundtrack, honestly, the, uh, the soundtrack, the reason I'm picking the soundtrack is because the, if the, the soundtrack is one thing, if they did it wrong, the, none of it would have worked. And I think a, and a lot of that has to do with because they established a very distinct sound for that for that uh, series with the movies. Uh, that there's, that's a big reason why I treasure those movies. And they could have just you know, use that music, I suppose, or tried to use that music, but instead they came up with an original soundtrack that also kind of like channeled the same whimsical vibe to it. And I love the soundtrack. I listen to it almost every day while I'm at work. It's, it's, it just, it's relaxing. It's, uh, and it captures the, the vibe and the personality and the, uh, of what I do love about that franchise. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my, I, I think I picked a, the song called the house cup which is just, you know, you hear it a lot when you're running around Hogwarts, so <laughs> that was my pick. And when we come back, we'll wrap up the show with our Spotlight Award and our Asterisk Award. Welcome back to the last segment of our 2023 last. award show. You know, it's it's almost comical how many years in a row we've tried to, like, tighten up the show and, and, and trim the fat, and yet it still ends up being a long-ass mm -hmm, podcast. Mm -hmm. Somehow it just um, keeps getting worse. Somehow it just keeps years, and we haven't figured that out. Crazy. It's a gas. It fills the volume of its container. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, all right. I hope you enjoyed uh, those soundtracks. We have two categories left tonight. Uh, and that's going to be our Spotlight Award, which is just our chance to kind of uh, shine a light on a game that we feel that came out this year that we feel deserves more attention. And our Asterisk Award, which is our chance to talk about a game that didn't come out this year that we played. Um, so, Brad, what is your Spotlight Award go to My this year? Spotlight... Oh, shit. He doesn't remember. He closed his dock. He, lo he no. lost his dock again. He forgot. I, I, just I, yeah. I just have two... I have more than one open. Anyways, the, the, the funny one. thing was, is while well, Brad's finding that, I sneezed, and right as I did, Brad said, oh shit, and I thought I didn't mute myself. And so I was <laughs> freaking out for a second, but it's just because he doesn't know what he's doing. So it's fine. Also, it's fine. real quick, Marlou read in chat says, maybe if you try making them longer, they'll get shorter. Maybe. <laughs> uh, that, you know what? Like a, There's some logic there. Like a pair trap kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Bring them together. Exactly. Maybe, maybe, um... Yeah. Also, one I more thing: like people who like Starfield eat little poo poos. Yeah, they're dumb <laughs> poo poo babies. Um, okay. I hate all of you. Spotlight <laughs> Award. You know what? This was going to be a thing where it's like, oh, more people need to try, and I'm like, sure. But like, it kind of lines up where like, it's kind of the one game, one of the games I really like this year that kind of didn't come up in any award category. So I'm going to make that my Spotlight Award. I'm going to give it to Pseudo Regalia. Pseudo Regalia. Mm. Oh Regalia. yeah. Which is like a really cool. Never heard of it. Um, you were really on the cool, podcast like, where we talked about it. It looks like an Adam. N64 like platformer, and it is a, a bit of like an N64 almost like adventure game, if you will. I honestly get strung like Castlevania 64 vibes from just looking at it or exploring that world. But ultimately, what's really strong about it is the uh, the platforming mechanics, um, and it's it's not it's not and it's not so much the design of like the platform level design but 
like the tools they give the player just to like make to like move through that world and through like that three-dimensional space and like really really like cool ways the way you string those moves together good I sequence like to, breaking stuff right? yeah but very good sequence breaking yeah. stuff you know when i first started playing i was like oh like mario 64 had all those like you know reverse jumps and triangle jumps and triple jumps and stuff but it's so complex i think more of like mario odyssey the stuff where you're like throwing your cap mid-air and like diving mm. or canceling out of a, a butt stomp to like cancel and do a dive so you can land on your hat and bounce it off bounce off your hat to get even further and and you know you're all you you feel like with mechanics like that like oh this isn't even intended right like i i feel like i'm breaking the game stringing this shit together and these cancels together but uh that's that's what i feel like playing pseudo regalia it's got so many cool mechanics like that and and it's a game where where i just you know striving to get really better at like mastering those mechanics because you feel really powerful as like you know you're you approach that skill ceiling which is really high it just if it, it feels so good to play it, it's it's there's a you know it's a little you know you can get lost right you you, you got you got to be patient you know really explore that world really get comfortable kind of learn that world you know you're not going to be able to rely on a map like you can in a, a more modern game but it, it looks like an old game and in some ways it's structured like an old game but man it plays beautifully absolutely Highly, highly recommend Pseudo Regalia. That's my spotlight award for this. That game came up a few times on the community list, more than I was I would have expected, and that's probably because you talked about it on the show, but uh, or at least I hope that's why. But uh, anyways, Chris <laughs> Davis. Okay, uh, spotlight award. Um, a game we very briefly mentioned tonight, but uh, Aliens: Dark Descent. Um, that look. Aliens games, you know, say what you will about Alien versus Aliens and whether you need to do it sort of a horror versus a shooter or things like that. This this and Fireteam Elite have felt like a really good like, OK, don't don't bring Chloe this, don't bring this fucking to You're going to talk me out of it all of a sudden. Fireteam. Well, you you missed out on the best campaign. Nick. That's I, the problem. You, you quit right at just the wrong moment. Uh, I will stand by that last campaign of that game is surprisingly good. Um, but Dark Descent, like with its kind of management that at almost XCOM style kind of uh, team management and the traversal of exploring maps and coming back and the overall game being built on a stress inducing time limit. Uh, really fun. I I think that this is like a surprisingly good adaptation of, of what you can do with this universe and these characters and all this sorts of stuff. I really encourage people to give it a shot. I'm going to find time for it this year. I think because I do like me some aliens um, for sure. Or hiding in lockers from aliens. True. Uh, alien isolation for the win. Um, but I will happily play some uh, isometric alien is games um all right ed yeah so um kind of in the same theme as brad uh a game that actually wasn't brought up at all in this entire uh, uh podcast um uh viewfinder mm, viewfinder ooh, is yeah, a game that. It was cool. where you can use uh polaroids to basically like change the world I, I don't know how else to describe it but it adds, or... yeah but you can do it in any any of the uh six directions or whatever um and so you basically place it and then it kind of puts that thing that's in the polaroid in the world with you um a lot of fun it's a little short and the in the last segment is like a gaunt, a time gaunt, timed gauntlet which is kind of lame but um the experience for for the first eighty percent was really good, um, so recommend it. Cool, uh, Nolan. Do you have one? Sorry, I didn't ask. Yes, for it. no, no, no. You're yeah. you're fine. You're fine. I do. I do have a spotlight award. Um, it's a game game I've talked about on the podcast, um, and I don't think anyone played it after I talked about it, which is fine. I think um, I know. Everyone likes that's the same. games that I like. Do you? Is it? Friends versus friends. You are right. It is or, friends versus friends. 
Damn, um, I'm good. I, uh, I really enjoyed that game. Um, it had a good soundtrack, first off, uh, but then it had some really good mechanics. It, you know, it, it, for those that don't remember when I talked about it, just a brief overview. Uh, it is a either 1v1 or a 2v2 shooter uh, slash kind of melee, uh, but it's all card based. Um, so it's a you're building a deck of, of weapons slash abilities you bring into a fight. Um, uh, some of them, you know, positive for you, negative for your enemies. Uh, some of them are more neutral, um, but it's a very quick paced, um, fun little uh, battles. Um, I had a whole lot of fun playing it for, you know, the few months that I did uh, kind of fell off because I was playing other games, um, but definitely worth checking out. I, I went to go check just because it is a multiplayer based game. They've had a pretty steady uh, number of players. Don't get me wrong. They're not getting up into like the thousands uh, of uh, of active players, but it looks like on average they have close to like 400, 500 people on any given day playing the game. So people are still I'm, playing it. Um, I'm mostly surprised that Nick was able to pull the game out of his ass. Was he got a little dock of Nolan games over there? What's going on? I mean, maybe he does. <laughs> Red Sheet wouldn't King you, over there. Wouldn't you like to know? It's called Great Value. Chat says, what's it called again? It's Friends versus Friends. Friends versus Friends. I have an encyclopedia like knowledge of all the games we talk about on this podcast, Brad, and who talked about them on what episode for how long. It's all it's all up yeah, here. Right. As a it's great host here. should. Yeah, that's a complete lie. Um Crispy? Um, I am going to say Against the Storm, since I'm the only person Ooh. that's played that game or ever heard of it or knows that it's a good well, game. game for because you guys are all true. so uninformed. Not I only is that not you guys were real gamers like true. me and knew what was up with these Crispy. early access games. I played Crispy. 20 hours of it. How many hours do you have, Brad? Crispy, listen to me. Listen uh-huh. to me. Oh, it hit 1.0 in December, which means it's a fuzzy December game, which means dodging I can play it and it'll count for next year as dodging a game of the, the year. Question. The fuzzy dodging December the game. What's, what's and he will fuzzy totally December play it game? Just fuzzy like, December. No. What, the fuzzy December? What? You don't remember fuzzy December? December can count for either this year's uh, or next year's I don't know about that. We yeah. haven't played that way We before. talked about this last year. We tried to apply it for Chain uh, Echoes this year. Avatar which, is also available which means if anyone wants to you, talk about you that. You could have... Character of the okay, year go ahead. Blade from Midnight Suns because he was okay. awesome. He was pretty great. All right, fine. Go ahead, play it. Go ahead, Nick. Or Brad. Go ahead. I'm Enjoy coming. my sloppy seconds there, Brad. Okay. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have it any other way, Crispy. <laughs> Anything else you want to say about Against the Storm? Um, like, what I have more to it? say about Starfield. I think <laughs> that. <laughs> No, I'm joking. Uh, Against the Storm is really cool. It's a roguelike city builder, if you've never heard of it, and you're like, how does that work? Uh, it just does. I don't know. Shut up. Um, it's fun, except you play as, like, little beaver and bird people, and I guess there's humans. I don't know. Eh, it's cool. Ooh, you should play it. I love the look of it, man. It makes me want to play some Warcraft, you know? I, uh, I, mean, yeah, I will it, definitely it, play some this year. You know what? It does, it does, yeah, it does have that Warcraft 3 vibe to it. Um, it's super sick. I wish I could have uh, dropped uh, my counterpick game. Oh my god, that, that was the one that I was praying <laughs> Nolan didn't notice. Uh, <laughs> 93. Uh, what are you gonna do, huh? Just real kicking the dick. Um, but yeah, it's a great game. All right, cool. Then uh, I'll, I guess I'll, uh, I'll give my spotlight award this year to a little game called uh, Starfield. I'm just kidding, not Starfield. Uh, no, uh, System Shock is a game that I don't think has come up much. Uh, I don't nope, show or this that. year. The uh, that game, the remake came out, and honestly, it, it's been a great year for remakes between Dead Space and Resident Evil Four. But I think System Shock was my favorite of those remakes that I played, anyways. Um, especially when you consider that uh, Dead Space and Re- Resident Evil are fairly new-ish games, and System Shock came out in 1994, I think it was, 93, 94, um, rendering it, for a lot of people like me, uh, fairly inaccessible. Uh, and this this remake was gra- a ground-up remake, modernization of, of, of this classic um, immersive sim game that captures that, like, alien space station um vibe really 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 well it brings back obviously um oh my god why am i having a complete brain fart here 
Uh, what's the villain's name? Why am I? Come mm, on, Brad, help uh, me out here. Uh, uh, oh my God, somebody Bowser. in chat, help Bowser. me. No, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay, Shodan, thank you. I don't know, I completely Gladys. left my brain. Thank you, Sterling, in chat. Uh, Shodan uh, is recreated in, 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 you know, a really cool interpretation. And uh, I don't know, that game just worked, on me, worked for me on it just about every level. Um, and it's one of the better immersive sims I've ever played. And uh, I don't know. It just didn't come up a lot this year, and it has a lot going for it. And if you've never played System Shock, it's a great way to go back and experience that game. I really, really, really hope they end up doing the same thing for System Shock 2, but I'm not really going to hold my breath on it. Um, but you yeah. Hear some, some, I heard someone say something about Immersive Sims that made more sense than anything I heard all year. And they said, the reason Baldur's Gate 3 is amazing is because it's not like an, like other game, other RPGs or RPGs. Baldur's Gate is like an immersive sim. Like, yeah, it's crazy. And it's fucking true. It's insane. That is, that is not inaccurate. All right. And our final award quote unquote for the night, and this is just really an opportunity for us to talk about a game that we came out this year that doesn't technically qualify for like 2023 awards or game of the year consideration that kind of thing just to shine a light on a game you played this year that wasn't from this year mm -hmm. uh, well or it's an asterisk or, it's an asterisk or it's an asterisk it could be dlc it could be a game still in early access it could be a fucking demo that you thought was amazing mm. it could be a movie 32 part documentary series about the making of psychonauts 2 over 10 years is that your my asterisk? asterisk award goes to Psych Odyssey, mm. and you know what? I've talked about it plenty. I'm done, you know, you know, pushing it on people like like in the whip. bullying or something. I, however, pe people <laughs> have really like been defensive about my me trying to get them to watch this, which is fine. I'm just here to say, if you care about games, you should watch it. Stop making excuses. I mean, you just sound dumb to me. That's all. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Watch Psych Odyssey if you care about video games at all. I promise right, you. Good you thing won't I be don't care about video games it's at all. Well, I mean, make your excuses. I don't care. Uh, you just sound dumb to me. I just told you, Nick. Um, yeah, you should watch Psych Odyssey. It's incredible. It's if I if I could if I would rank it in my game experiences of the year, it, I might even put it on my top ten list. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give it my asterisk You're award. Not Carlos. Um, I'm like not a, Carlos. That feels, like, that feels right. like a Carlos thing. Dude, there is something that he put on the dock that is a game. That yeah, honestly, I saw it. Might actually should go on my top ten list. But I'm yeah, no, I don't. I um, don't disagree. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, Psych Odyssey. Watch it. Um, it's incredible. Yeah, video cool. games are amazing, and watch how they're made is extraordinary. Chris Davis. This is something I didn't talk about earlier this year, uh, but uh, back in the summer, I got Jonesing to play an RTS. Uh, but there really wasn't anything that was really grabbed my eye. Uh, and then I remembered, oh, Company of Heroes 2 did a pretty uh, popular expansion. Uh, maybe I should go play that because I, I did not like what Relic did with their main campaign of that game. They, this was in the middle of the time when Relic was creating, uh, was really hopping on the MOBA uh, gameplay style bandwagon. Really didn't like that. Um, but this was called Company of Heroes 2 Ardennes Assault. It's about the Battle of the Bulge. Um, and it's this nonlinear, semi roguelite uh, campaign where you're defending against the German onslaught in the December of 1944. Uh, it's really cool in which you just have this, this segmented meta map that you're moving your units around and trying to uh, head off the Germans or defend against them. And the further along you go, if you let an area become too well built up, that mission becomes harder. Um, and you've got to strategize on what kind of what battalion you want to send in to fight the enemies, whether you have done the necessary uh like uh, stat requisitions to make them tougher, give them more units, things like that. And whether uh, they have the necessary reinforcements to actually withstand the battle. Like the worse you do in a map, the worse it affects you in the meta of campaign. 
Uh, so you'll lose it. You'll your stats lower, and that means you can call in less reinforcements. Your units will be less effective in combat, things like that. Um, and I really found myself enjoying that for about 15 to 20 hours of content. It is a ever, solid experience. Did you even play any Company of Heroes 3? Just out of curiosity, no, I did not. I can't remember. Okay. No, I did I not. Sure. That did come out this year, right? I didn't imagine that. I was yeah, I, I was too skeptical that. of that game because I didn't hear that it wasn't telling me the things I needed to hear about it. Um, Makes sense. It, Makes sense. So. All right. Um, Ed. Yeah, cool. So uh, in, a, in a year where I was playing a lot of handheld, um, I played I did end up playing Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13. Yes. Uh, I <laughs> played Papers, Please for the first time and finished it. Yeah. I played Batman Arkham Asylum for the first time and finished yeah. it. Uh, the Messenger, XCOM, Enemy Unknown, and of course, Star wow. Wars Jedi, as I mentioned Enemy before. Enemy Unknown? Yep. Um, so, uh, which went playable on Steam Deck uh, this year. You didn't that's play why Baldur's I was able to play it. Wait, Enemy so, Unknown or Enemy Within? Enemy, Enemy Unknown and okay. Enemy Within went playable. Um, but... Wow. My winner for the Asterix Award, as I mentioned Walker. on the last podcast, last full podcast I, I was on, is Halo: The Master Chief Collection, mm. specifically on Steam Deck. the The idea that I could play Halo handheld anywhere in the world, anytime I wanted, uh, would have just turned uh, younger me over. And so I am just so glad that this world exists now, where I can play. Uh, Pretty video wild. games in general on the go very easily um in, in almost every single one of my games i can do that so did the steam deck come out this year or was that a last year thing no that was remember. that was last okay. year gotcha. and i think mm -hmm. yeah it was yeah, it was last year but gotcha cool uh uh nolan yo uh so my Astros award for 2023 uh is going to go to a game i played that came out in 2022 a uh, little indie game. Nick, I don't know if you know what it is. You have an encyclopedic memory of every game I've played, apparently. Nope. Did they talk about it on the podcast? Uh, is it uh, Pokemon it, Legends Arceus? It is not. It's a oh, roguelike. What's that? Oh, I got yeah. nothing. I got nothing. With, with tower defense. Oh, is it the the one where you're you go like the miner dig deep plus the the where they shoot the the dome dome keeper? What's it called? No, it is not dome keeper. Dome keeper is a great game though. Uh, oh, I did play that, that the year it came out. Uh, Rogue Tower uh, is uh, the name of the game. It is uh, a roguelike tower defense game. Uh, uh, you could have just guessed. Uh, that one. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, is there a game called Rogue Tower? Yes, he's that, played it. He's recommending it right now. <laughs> Um, fantastic Rogue game. Legacy. Uh, it is um, literally as simple as it sounds. Um, instead of you know, as the world expands, it is roguelike. You know, the order of enemies and types and blah 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 and, and upgrades and stuff are randomized. And it starts out very slow, but um, the skill tree uh, in this game is fucking enormous. Um, the number of skills and abilities and towers and upgrades and stuff you can get is crazy. Um, and uh, it really builds on itself and it, it, it does get challenging for sure. Um, and so uh, I think I'm pretty sure I talked about it at least once on the podcast uh, this past year, um, but I, I really enjoyed it. It's one of those things where out of curiosity, I had looked it up. It's not even in open critic um, on, on, on steam. It only has 4,800 huh? reviews. Uh, so yeah, it's a fairly small game, uh, but uh, highly recommended uh, at least, you know, go, watch a YouTube video or find out when I played it in the past on the talked about it on the podcast. But yeah, great game. Cool. All right. Crispy. I am going to give my asterisk award to cyberpunk 2077. Fuck you. With the caveat that I played this in April of this year before, before the 2.0, <laughs> before the 2.0 update. Back when That's it was just stress. regular Cyberpunk 2077, but they basically fixed it. But, like, skills and everything still worked the old way. And let me tell you something. I, like, 
I put like 40 hours in that game in like two weeks. Like I, I really kind of got down on it and was like, this is sick. Like Did you put any of it after the update went through? No, I haven't. Oh, I've, been, wow. I've been wanting to. I've been wanting to. I want to buy the DLC, but like I'm just. Dude, the DLC like, is I, so good. I know. It feels I, weird I, even I calling it a DLC because it's big. No, I know. I know. And and I, it, yeah, I just. Maybe if you were wasting all that time playing Baldur's Gate 3. I wasn't wasting all that time playing Baldur's Gate. It's like, geez, you know? Like, yeah, I just haven't been buying a lot of games lately for whatever reason. I don't know what it could be, but um, it's on my list. Maybe that should be my I Won't Quit You. <laughs> Maybe it should be, man. I can't recommend I it enough. You. It's so okay. fucking sick. Like it was like because this I did the same thing you did where like I watched Edge Runners and I'm like yeah I'll get back into Cyberpunk and I was always like what Nolan talked about where he's like I like doing stealthy characters so like the first time I played Cyberpunk I was all stealthy and hacking and then I was like nah man I'm doing the David fucking Martinez I'm I'm getting a San Deviston and just going beast mode on everybody and that is such a fun way to dude, play that game. <laughs> like, dude, the, the... <laughs> The expansion, the Phantom Liberty expansion, if you're not already aware, is like a straight up fucking like spy thriller. Yeah, like, I've like heard. and and you're like yeah. doing missions with the president of the United States and shit. Like it's it's wild. And Idris Elba's there, and it's, it's I know. Oh man, it's good. I know. It, it's I, good. I know. Um, you like Idris Elba? You should watch The Wire, Nick. The Wire. <laughs> uh, I'm actually watching Luther. You should watch Hobbs and Shaw. I have I watched Hobbs and Shaw, and I'll pass. I have too, and I, like... <laughs> uh, uh, whatever. Man. Whew. All right. Um, my asterisk award I'm going to give to uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, but specifically because... I don't know if you recall way back in 2019 when that game first came out. I hated that game. I don't maybe maybe hate's a strong word. I played that game. Oh, oh. It did not work for me on almost any level. Um, I finished it, forgot almost everything about it, um, was convinced that I wasn't really interested in playing Jedi Survivor. And then I decided to maybe before I spent a bunch of money on playing Jedi Survivor, I should go back and dabble in Jedi Fallen Order again. See how I really see if I still feel the same way about it. Completely different response. Wow. Completely different reaction to that game. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's, it's the my vibes. frame of mind back there. It's I don't the know. Vibes the vibes were on this time. No, no, no. It's, it's the patches and the polish. And what did you play it on PC? No, no, no. Like, I, was, I, was, I was, I was not vibing with things like characters and story and stuff, which yeah. obviously has not changed at all. I mean, yeah, it was buggier back then. It, it hasn't changed no. now. But, but I, I didn't care much for Cal. I didn't really, I didn't care for any of it, for Grease mm -hmm. or any of his buddies. I was just like, this is not clicking with me at all for some reason. And I even finished it back in the day, playing it this year. Prior to playing Jedi Survivor, for whatever reason, I was in a different frame of mind. I fucking the vibes. That's what I'm saying. The vibes were on this time. It is so, and you cared. And good. then when you played Jedi Survivor, and you got to Kobo, and you got to Grease's bar, and you like saw Grease again, he's like, oh, and you guys like hug. You were like, oh, I was man. in it. You were like Grease, was... yeah, he's back, exactly. like yeah. Uh, he's like he's like everyone's dad. He's great. You know, I had I at this point I had not watched Andor. Um, <laughs> Andor what? <laughs> you know what? Oh, well, actually, you know what it was. So like, I went. I think it was. I was kind of bouncing off of. I was still kind of. I had recently gone to uh, uh, Disney World and gone to all the Star Wars stuff there, and I came back, and this was a short, like a month or two after that, and I was like still kind of like. Oh, I was like kind of riding a Star Wars high at that point. Um, so I was like, let's give this another shot. And I did. And it was almost instantaneous. I was like, yeah, actually, this is pretty fucking sick. I don't know what I was smoking back then. Nick. And uh, and then I rolled this right is... into Jedi Survivor and fucking. See, he went to the he went to the re-education center, got his indoctrination. <laughs> yep. And now he's yep. a good Star Wars fan no. like the rest of us. No, what, what, what he's saying <laughs> here it is poetic that we're ending this with you with this game. You're basically saying that. Everything we said tonight doesn't really matter because in a few years our can opinions change. can be yes. different for no yes. actual reason. Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> Hold on. On that note, on that note, Nick, your vibes have changed. Your opinions have changed. You've grown as a person. Your family tales man. From the Borderlands. Tales oh, from no. the Borderlands <laughs> might be worth revisiting. Yes, yes, Nick. Come on. Here's One of the best games of all time. Here's the, here's the problem, Nolan. 
I liked mm-hmm. Tales from the Borderlands. Mm, okay. I mm-hmm. liked the first episode I played. I was like, oh, this is pretty good. This is really good. And it gets nothing but better. I know it does. You, you friend zoned I know it. it. Does. It's okay. I, I friend zoned it because everybody wouldn't stop no. telling me to play. On the other hand, it, Nick, you might end up hating Starfield in a couple That's years. True. That's I, true. <laughs> like the rest of us grown ups. <laughs> I realize I said that. I'm sorry. I played like I still love days. I still love Days Gone as much as I did. That's how many years ago that was. The, the only so. problem is we'll never play it, so we can't verify if you were right. Or yeah, not. you're a fucking. <laughs> I played it. Wait, actually, it was okay. That's not true. Chris Davis played it, and he yeah. liked it. Yeah, uh, about that. Eh, it was okay. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we now he's turning you on you. you. Now he's turning on you. I know. Ne- it's I, okay. I, Dude, you were real positive. You know what I was surprised by? The Especially sales st- of Days Gone. Because that was part of that leak. And we know it sold well. Wasn't Days Gone one of the ones Chris Davis did a statement on? Oh, I think right. so. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it, it was. Is. I think yeah. it was, one, it was it one of the first. And Nick lost his shit the moment I said bad things about the motorcycle. Yeah, I think you're a crazy fucking person. for Now that, that checks but. out. Off. I hate all of you. I think it's time to wrap this shit up. <laughs> no, I think we I think we should start over and rethink all of our categories. Let's start from the this top. Is, this is all we do now. <laughs> all right. Anyways, my runner up um, was. I am going to retire for the evening to play like some Odyssey. Starfield. Um, <laughs> no, you're, I'm just no, I'm going to bed. That's I'm going what to makes bed. me sad. Um, yeah, you know what? Just to piss you off, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish Starfield before I finish Baldur's Gate three. No, like uh, I told you, I'm trying to drive no. you to spite stop playing Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, I, I don't know why you I, would do that, because, you crazy person. Because I don't believe the. I mean, I would only believe that you stopped it because you hated it. I would never believe that you stopped it out of spite. <laughs> you can't convince me otherwise. But I, I, I okay. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with us. Um, oh man, it's uh, 2023 was quite a year, and Ooh, uh, of it? course, it Ooh. is January. So we are going to. Some of us are going to have top ten videos coming out here pretty soonish. We're kind of getting close to actual like production. Chris David, we're working on it. We're getting close. Okay. Uh, So the plan is uh, to have top 10 videos out before the end of January, if at all possible. So keep your eyes peeled for those. But for now, that's this is kind of the uh, we've wrapped up 2023. I will get our overall year in review up on the site at fourplayernetwork.com once we have all of our lists done. Um, But for now, we're shifting gears into 2024. So when we come back next time, we'll be talking about all the new stuff. We'll be talking about Fancy Critic 2024. Um, Lots of stuff to go on. Go on there. In fact, there's a, the first major release of the year is coming up here, I think next week, and it's on Ed's list. Prince of Persia, uh, the forgotten whatever. No, What's it called? No Ragnaros. <laughs> no, it's Prince of Persia and the Lost. I don't know what it's the that Prince the of Persia game. The Lost Crown. The Lost, Lost That's Crown. That's not the first big release of the year, by the way. Oh, I'm saying that. Well, it's just an example, Brad. It's just an example. It's the first one on on the list of drafted games, at least. That's true. Um, so anyways, my point is next week we'll be talking about 2024 and beyond. So, um, in the meantime, guys, be good to each other, play video games. If you're not in our discord, join us in discord at discord.gg slash four player and have a good night. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.